remember? Oh, but I thought... What? Well, I thought you'd have gone off with your fancy man, Frank Harvey. He's not my fancy man. Anyway, where's Frank gone to? Gone off to his new pub. His what? Well, he never told me he was going last night. Well, he might find an odd sock in his bedroom, but that's about all. He left first thing. The rotten pig. He said he was going to take me with him. Yeah, well, half of what some fellas say is lies, Chuck, and the other half's rubbish. Don't I know it? Do you know what? I don't think any man's ever really been straight with me. <sighs> Not since I was 16, anyway. Andy Rod, you think you've got problems? Bet Lynch comes back today as gaffer, and she's going to be in a right pickle. Why? Well, Betty Turpin still can't find to her bed, isn't she? Now, you're not much of a chief, are you, when there's no Indians to do the donkey work? <laughs> well, I mean, you're more of a decoration than a long brush, if you don't mind me saying so. Bye, Ekal. Did you know this place were haunted? What does the poem say? Alone and palely loitering? No, Emily, don't be sarky. It doesn't suit you. Has anybody got a paracetamol? There's plenty of cold water in the tap. You want to stick it under that? Better than all these drugs. No lectures, please, Alf. Just a little white tablet. My head feels as though somebody keeps running up and kicking it. <laughs> I'm going to think I've got something in my handbag. Have you got the flu? Oh, some flu, huh? You should have heard her. Falling out of a taxi at midnight singing Never Do a Tango with an Eskimo. Alf! Look, we had this uh, farewell do, didn't we, you know, in uh, Buxton. You know this manager's course I've been on? It got a bit out of hand. Did you say I come home in a taxi, Alf? I was supposed to get a lift on the back of a motorbike. Thanks, love. You're an angel of mercy, what are you? I... Well, she's hardly a good advert for the job, is she? I mean, if that's what Dream does for you. When does she take over at the Rovers? Well, oh, today, she never gets herself framed. From Annie Walker to Bet Lynch. Would you say that was the march of progress? <laughs> We're different, that's for sure. Definitely. Ah, just reporting, Mrs. Bishop. Really? Uh, yes, tickets for the uh, dance to go in like hot cakes they are. Oh, that's good. Yes, it's the way I sell them, of course. Oh, naturally. Yeah. Well, uh, keep up the good work. Bye. Bye, Bye love. Very handsome lady, Mrs. Bishop. Wasted as a widow. A rose without a garden, as you might say. You want to watch it, Percy Sugden. You'll be getting a reputation as a philanderer if you're not very careful, won't you, Alf? Uh, if you haven't got one already. What are you talking about? My reputation, as far as the ladies are concerned, is unblemished. How like my army record. How can you stand there and say that? Lusting after Emily Bishop, the morning after you were seen leaving the Rovers, arm in arm with Phyllis Pierce. Aye, walking her home, I understand. Invited in, I heard. Oh, aye, come and have a drink. There'll be all that going on. One thing leads to another. Inevitably. For your information, the lady in question was nervous of walking home on her own in the dark. So I accompanied her. Now, in my mind, that's the action of an officer and a gentleman, not a philanderer. But it's how the world sees it, Percy. Ah, you know the mucky mind some folk have. Yes, I'm looking at a couple of them. And as for Mrs. Bishop, I wasn't lusting after, as you so call it, young lady. I was appreciating her qualities. Now, that's another sign of an officer and a gentleman. Still, I can understand you not recognising it. Could it, you know, somebody of your age, you won't have seen many gentlemen. Good morning. You're not to pull his leg. I know. Are you, uh, lusting after anybody at the moment, Al? Don't start on me. No, I just thought this dance might be an opportunity for you, mm -hmm. like asking Rita. I mean, I'll ask her for you if you like. I can do my own asking if you don't mind. Are you going to? Top for the morning, ladies! Hey, Andy, your trip go on down London, Mr. Walden. Was there any doubt that I'd be brilliantly successful either? Depends what I were brilliantly successful at, though, down London, doesn't it? I mean, I went down there and it's Todd Warry. No, he got his lady friend with him. Business colleague, Bill. This bloke was even more impressed than Reg. He's a salesman for the whole of the south of England. He reckons if he can't sell these suits, he's going to jack it all in and take up croquet. Oh, what impressed him most about them? Everything. Style, colour, quality, everything. So we're into production then? Definitely. Reg wants to fly like yesterday, and if this other bloke comes up trumps, <laughs> Well, what about up here, the north? Yeah, well, there are women and girls up here too, Emily. I have noticed one or two. Ooh, only one or two? Yeah, we do a blitz on every customer we've got. And if I'm sober for the next month, I'm not doing my job properly. Sober? Yes, you've got to entertain to gain a few bob, Emily. It's in the rich man's manual. Uh, oh. Excuse me, uh, is it all teasing you? Uh, yes, yes, please. Oh, I'll be having mine in my office. Henry. Right. Hello, Mr. Baldwin. Morning. 
That's, um... It's Silver's lodger. Well, what's he doing here? Well, he works here. He does? He came for an interview while you were away. He said to take him on, if he was suitable. He was, so I did. Well, he's more than suitable, is Harry Henry. He's a proper little treasure. Indeed. Right. Well, I'm going to let Mob out there the good news, in my own inimitable way. <laughs> It's all right. You're not seeing things. I'm just a wizard with powder and lipstick. And the rest. Hey, what did you get back there? We'll not go into that, Jack, if you don't mind. It's in the past, like the whole of my life so far. Like the song says, this is the dawning of the age of Elizabeth Theresa Lynch. Are you taking over today, are you? I am that cock. Is it right there's going to be free ale all day? No, it's not. Anyway, good luck, mate. Thanks, Al. We're going to miss her as well, aren't we, Alf? Cluttering place up with her earrings and her hangovers. Yes, we are. I'm only down the street, for goodness sake. Just one thing, darling. Don't forget who your best friends are. Oh, I dare say I'll find I've got quite a lot of them, Jack. See ya. Ooh. You know, I reckon she'll do a good job. Oh, she was made for it. Hey, did you know? Landlines don't walk the tech taxis. <laughs> All in good time, Vera. Hey, what have you got in your case, your overalls? Uh, <laughs> hey, I've been another pair of knickers. <laughs> Dead right, girls. Waterhouse had a lodge he used to keep calling for his dog in his sleep. Sharp he'd bawl, come on Sharp, and he'd whistle at the top of his voice. I wouldn't care but the dog had been dead for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Good day. morning. Oh you do, turn up sometime then. Yeah well I was late getting back last night, who's uh... Oh I'm forgetting my manners. You've not met Gloria. Uh, Gloria Todd. Hiya, you must be Bet. Hello. Gloria works here. Does she? Frank took me on while you were away. He decided he was short staffed. Did he? Was Betty? She's still off sick. She's what? She can't be. Yeah, and Frank Harvey's already slung his hook. Oh, good riddance, I say. We'll be better off without him, Bet. He's a right lech. Look, love, do you mind going polishing a pump handle or so while well, I have a quiet word with Mrs Ogden? Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind what I do. I'm very amenable. She's uh, very attractive, isn't she, Gloria? I don't believe this. I don't believe it. I come back here to claim my inheritance. There's hardly any inheritance. Do you know, that's just what I said. Oh, you have got a lot of problems, haven't you? Well, I mean, with Betty not being here, you're Jill of all trades, like. Who's going to do the heavy work, like humping crates, for instance? And you'll be very tired and all, won't you? Oh, do you know, I can see you hardly being able to put your nose outside that front door. You might have the position, but have you got the happiness? Oh, I wish you'd shut up, Hilda. This was supposed to be a red-letter day for me, not a shambles. Is Gloria much use? I just hope she is. She's very popular with the customers. Well, then we're pants on. Which means she's about as much use as a concrete cushion. Oh, well, that could be an exaggeration. Just. Any road, I'll go and finish off. I've not much more to do. Because uh, Mrs Walker used to slope off to their Jonies, didn't she, when there was a crisis? But you're stuck with it. Still, could be the making of you. Or not, as the case may be. And you're old. Good luck, kid. <laughs> Problems, Ivan? Oh, it's these pockets. You know, they're just a bit tricky. You can say that again. Well, I can have another look at them if you like, but uh, I think they're all right where they are. No, I think it's just a matter of getting used to them. I tell you what, it's a lot different work than turning out jeans. <laughs> Hey, Frank Mr. Baldwin's off at Moon with that London trip. Went down the bomb, I reckon. It did. Good. I believe you enjoyed yourself, Phil. I had a fabulous time, Vera. Yeah, that should be. Well, you're only jealous. Yes, I am. Why should she get all perks, eh? Like being wined and dined in London and the rest. Well, all I get is sore fingers. Because it was her idea, Vera. She's the one with the brains. <laughs> Didn't expect to see you in today. Wild horses couldn't keep me away. Especially now we're going into production. 
No, I mean, after being away for a couple of days, I'd have thought your husband would have had you handcuffed at a hoover or the other or something. Especially being away with a big bad boss. There's no need to bother doing that. It'll be just as bad again this afternoon. Well, a clean ship is a happy ship. Come again? Something we had drummed into us in the sea cadets. Very true. Oh, really? Well, you know what my motto is? I pull tummy, he's happy tummy. I'll see you later. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Oh. Ivan, I'm glad I've caught you. I've got a letter for you. A letter for me? Came by the lunchtime post. Addressed to the shop steward. What time? Are you coming to what? I'll follow you across. Okay. Ida. Ida? You are. Shirley's talking to you. Are well, you having another drink? Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that lets the bad news about Ida. No. Well, it takes like it were union business. Well, you're very quiet this dinner. Oh, all right. Are you sure you're all right with these light ales, love? I've just not had time to get any lagers up from the cellar. Don't worry yourself. Why don't you get gorgeous Gloria over there to pick up a couple of crates? I don't think she could even find the cellar, love. <laughs> she doesn't seem to do much of anything, does she? Set to uh, chat the fellas up. Gloria, have you got a minute? Yeah. Will you finish this order off for me and there's still two shandies to come? Bottles. No, made up, which means you'll have to pull this handle. Don't strain yourself. She wants some food as well. There she is, every fella's dream. A sexy woman as runs a pub. Yes, we will have them free drinks now. There'll be free drinks on my first anniversary when I see if I'm making a do or not. Which at this rate is very doubtful. Well, young Gloria should help you do that, shouldn't she? About time we had a bit of decent talent behind this bar. It was getting a very dull image, you know. You're only joking, aren't you, Dad? No. What did I do? You nearly got yourself banned in her first hour. Will somebody come and get these drinks? Oh, all right. There is something bothering you, isn't there, Ida? Uh, I've been waiting to have a chance with you about that letter. Well, what about it? Well, it says Henry Wakefield's a scab. It says who says? Well, it's not signed. It just says that he worked all them months at Addison's Foundry were on strike. Hey, uh, you only had meat and potato pies, Ivy, so I've ordered you a cheese sandwich, OK? Right. Is there? Well, I say we should ignore damn letter. I mean, it's a poison pen letter, isn't it? And I say we should ask him if it's true or not. It's a serious accusation, that, Ivy. Hey, hello. You two are back early, are you? You must be happy in your work. Henry, mm -hmm. I had this before dinner. This letter. Is what it says true, Henry? Henry? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but there's probably more to it than what it says in there. I mean, you probably had a good reason. Like it says. I worked, Ivy. For what reason could there be? Hey, hello. By the way, how did you go on last night? Go on? Yeah, didn't I see you leaving the Rovers arm in arm with Mr Sugden? Don't talk to me about that. Why? He didn't misbehave himself, did he, the cad? No, worse luck. He got me to the bottom of our street and he said you can manage on your own now from here and he shoots off like a rabbit with a ferret after it. And the least I expected was a stroll round Red Wreck. It was a lovely moonlight night. Oh, you'll have to change your perfume. I'll have to change some to that, love. Hey, you can always get yourself a ticket to this dance he's running. Don't worry, I'm working on that one. Too. Oh. Well, what dance is this? Oh, it's just a local op over the road, you know, community centre. Mm. Just the place to meet people. Everybody who is anybody will be there, including Alf. He's a right gigolo on the quiet, Alf, you know. Oh, I'd go like a shot, but Harry's not keen on dancing, are you? I'd have thought you'd have been a right twinkle toes. The merry milkman singing on his round, doing the odd fish tail down the garden path. The trouble is, my feet are toned up. <laughs> when he gets on a dance floor, everybody else leaves it. Mm, like I wish I'd never mentioned dance. I've got a lot of other talents, aren't I, love? No. 
come on, let's get you back in that bedroom. Oh, I'll cover your ears up. He's decorating it. He's only come shopping with you so he can get out of it. I can't stand wallpaper with flowers on it. No, I can't either. Give me a nice muddy brown. Don't show up muck either. Exactly. Yeah, they've got no idea, fellas, have they, about colour and design and that. Philistine. Exactly the word I was looking for. Come on, you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, love. See Come you. on. A nice couple, aren't they? Hi, they seem it, yeah. He seems like he could be a bit impact, you know. No, oh, I don't think so. Al. Yeah? You've asked Rita to this dance, haven't you? Yes, I've asked her. And? She's coming. You crafty so-and-so, Alf Roberts. You never said a word. Well, I can get my leg pulled like Percy. And will you be buying her an expensive diamond necklace? And will you clasp it gently round her neck just before you leave for the ball? See what I mean? You've been in a very evil mood all day, you Oh, have. no, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Well, never mind all that. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry to hear it's been worse than you thought it would be. How about you, Aaron? I'd helped you out myself, you know, only... Well, I'm that busy these days, what with all my jobs and uh, looking after Henry. I don't know how you cope. Oh, it's all a matter of organisation, really. I suppose it's a gift I've got. Probably. I'd have been all right if Gloria had done a share. She's done nothing all dinner time. She's neither used nor ornament. Oh, I wouldn't say that. She's very ornamental. Don't start that again. Hey, isn't that what you really don't like about her? She's uh, competition. Well, two light bulbs can't share the same socket, and that's a fact. But she's not up to the job. That's the main thing. Well, fire her then. That's part of your job now, isn't it? Ask her to come in on your way out, will you? Are you sure? Ask her to come in. Right. <coughs> Ilda says you want to see me. How long have you been in the trade, Gloria? How long have you worked behind the bar? Off and on. Why? You've not learned a lot, have you? Oh, I think I've learned an awful lot. You should have seen me when I first started. Were you working when Frank took you on? No, not really. Look, Gloria, I don't want to insult you or anything. But uh, all you've done this dinner time is loll about like a fox fur. Me? You've hardly pulled your weight at all. Well, I'm sorry you think so. I thought I'd never stop. Chatting up the men, yeah. Well, it's part of the job, isn't it? I mean, personality, being friendly. I mean, that's why I think you and me are such a great team. We are? Yeah, well, you're the practical, experienced one, and I supply the... well, the charm. You make it sound like Beauty and the Beast. Still, if you're not satisfied with me work... I'm not. Well, I don't know why not, Bet. I mean, I can pull a glass of beer. I'm not bad at adding up. You're lousy at adding up. I saw you using all your fingers to add two fives. Yeah, well, I've been used to modern tills, you know, that add up for you. You could always go and find another one. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of doing that. What? Leave you in the lurch to run this place on your own? No, I'll stop. And put up with the inconveniences. Thanks very much. It's all right. See you later. Hang on. Oh, now, it might be a bit later than later, you know, cos I'm having my hair done at six, and you know Roy at Studio 12. He loves working on my hair, so he's not always to an hour, you know. OK, bye. Gloria! Haven't you seen enough of those for one day? Mm, I'm still not sure I've got these pockets right. Well, sleep on it. It's time we weren't here. I thought you were a workaholic. I am, but I know when to stop. And anyway, if we go now, it's time to buy you a drink before you turn into a housewife. David, what are you doing here? Thought I'd see where you keep running off to. Taking your breath away, is it? My empire? I'm uh, Mike Baldwin, by the way. Oh, sorry, this is David, my husband. How do you do? How do you do? It's um, smaller than I expected. Yeah, but we think it's big. Hey, Chris? Yeah. We're just going uh, for a drink, you know, uh, after a hard day's work, pub across the road. Oh, I think David would rather go home, wouldn't you, David? No, no, I'd, I'd love a drink. After you, then. you. <laughs> I thought we got burglars. <laughs> now, uh, you sit down and have a little relax. I've got you the evening paper. Thanks. I've uh, done you a nice lamb chop for your tea. Is that all right? Fine. And I've done some mash with it. Is everything all right? Only you look a bit down. They know. 
at work about what happened at Addison's. How? Anonymous letter. Anonymous letter? Oh, what a rotten thing to do. Will that cause trouble for you? Depends. If they decide it's any of the business, the women, they could ask for me to be fired, insist on it. Oh, Henry. And you've only just started. It's like an albatross hanging round my neck, Addison's. Is it your first anniversary yet? No. Well, is it going so far, then? Only power gun to your head, is it? What flaming power? I couldn't even manage to fire Gloria. What do you want to do that for? Look, I know you think she's a walking cream bum, but she's useless. There's no room here for any sleeping partners. There's too much work, especially cellar work. You're a muscle man, don't you? Yeah. Do you know anybody? Me? You? Well, I can give you a lift any time, can't I? I'm very fluid on my window round. Well, I'm probably balmy, but I'm definitely desperate. You're on. Isn't even staff on for you? Here. So you're a chartered accountant, eh? That's right. Ooh. You must hear more tall stories than a golf club steward. I'll get my share, yeah. Here, you can't arrange my fears so the tax man pays me, can you? No. Nah, that's what my accountant says. Don't know why I employ him. Still, I'm not complaining. Not after our trip to London, eh, Chris? You know, I've got the feeling this is a start of something big, so let's have another drink, eh? No, Now, come on, only one. I'm in the mood. Our trip to London. You told me you went on your own. I didn't say that. Well, you definitely didn't say he was going to. I don't say what did You lied. Why? OK, I suppose I should have mentioned it. Where are you going? Come on. I said, come on. Unless you want a bloody row here. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, I'll explain tomorrow. Have they walked out on you? Looks like it, yeah. What about these whiskies? Well, we'll have to drink them ourselves, won't we? Right. I could help as well. Go on then, give him one. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Mrs. Ogden. Collected these off Matt. Oh, way. Eh. I thought nobody'd remember. I thought there were cards. Your birthday, is it? Yeah, another one. <laughs> no, I wish you'd told me. Oh, go on with you. I'm past the age when I go broadcasting it. Ah. Happy birthday, Graham. Trevor, Polly, Damien and Jane. Ah, that's my son and his family. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, you'll have to get a move on, you know, Henry. It's turned eight. Now, will I do your bacon and egg, or I've got sausages if you prefer? Uh, no, I'll just have this and a cup of tea. Oh, no, you won't. Not with the day's work in front of you. Ah, uh, well. Ah, love and a big kiss, Eddie, Marion and Dawn. Eddie was me other lodger I was telling you about. Right then, now, uh, bacon and egg? I don't know whether I can face it. Well, have sausages then. No, I mean going back to work in factory. Why ever not? Well, all them women knowing that I've been a blackleg. Here, now, that's no way to be talking. Bad enough folk calling you without you starting to agree with them. Now, I've worked alongside them women, and I'll tell you this. They always say more behind your back than they ever will to your face. I dare say. You had good reason for doing what you did, and it's not to do with them any road. Now then, I'm going to do your bacon and egg and sausage. That way you'll be a match for any of them. <laughs> do you fancy a trip up to the bank? I don't think I'm going to get there. Not today. Yes, of course. I've got a buyer coming this afternoon, only God knows if there'll be anything ready for him to look at. Especially if that lot out there got anything to do with it. Well, is Miss Millwood not coming in? Your guess is as good as mine. Well, I thought she seemed very keen. She is, but it might be a case of circumstances beyond her control. Look, I'm making two checks out here. The small ones for petty cash and the big ones for me, what? Right. Hey, Ivy. Oh, I've had a letter back from the Union, you know, about that anyway, if you're being that lake. Oh, what's it say? Well, I'm not sure, really. First of all, they say it's up to us, and then they say it's this union's recommended policy that its members should not work along known strike records. What do you make of that? Well, it looks as if they... Rather, we didn't work with him, but they're not going to tell us not to. What's that? A final demand for electric? No, it's not, Duckworth. They pay my electric bills. Yeah. Well, it looks just like one of them. And you'd know, wouldn't you, Vera? Yeah, I would. Hey, listen, I don't believe in paying for all unless you're forced. Oh, listen, listen, I found the man in our house, get put on the fire back. <laughs> what do you think I should do? No, it's not to do with me. Well, you're at Julian. Yes, but I'm not the shop steward. I'm rank and file, me either, and that's where I'm stopping. Thanks. It's 
speak will be soon enough for that. Yes, Ivy. Uh, then flying socks, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, we've got first batch ready for pressing. But you told us to hang on until the designer had had a look at pockets, so, you know, we're hanging on. Good. Yeah, but how long have we got to hang on for? You want something first thing this afternoon, don't you? Yeah, but Miss Millwood's not here at the moment, is she? Oh. Well, when will she be? I don't know. Well, well can you give her a ring and find out? I can, yes, if and when I choose, all right? Yeah. Thank you. So what do you want us to do with it? I don't know, just hang on. Keep on hanging on. Oh, we'll hang on, all right. We're getting very good at that. Are you Tom? No, what? You got a visitor. I like it. Empress of all, she's a face. Look, if you were born to it. <laughs> well, if I were, it's been hell of a long birth. Hmm, it has. Anyway, you've come to give us the benefit of your muscles, haven't you? I'll give you the benefit of my muscles any time, darling. Do you talk to all the empresses you meet like that? Most of them are mine. Seem to like it. Come on, then. I'll show you what I want. And don't tell me you already know, or I shall stick a stiletto straight through your foot. Right, there's these empties want taken out of the back. Then I want a crate of stout, crate of light ale, crate of lagers. That'll do for starters. A lot of fellas have fancies about being enslaved by a dominating woman, you know. And they all want to be temporary sellermen, do they? Well, no, no, no. There's generally more to it than that way. <laughs> well, I've got news for you then, Jacko, because in your case... No chance. Got it in one. Morning, Gloria. Do you know you're actually on time? Oh, I can be. I'm not a creature of habit. Hiya, Gloria. Hiya. Are you weightlifting with that crate or taking it down the cellar? See you later. What's he doing? He's helping me out, love. Which is what you're supposed to do as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, right, that's uh, £3.20, please, love. Oh, and I'll be an hand cream. Something to keep my skin nice and soft. I don't think... No, uh... chemist, love. Oh, I know they'll have it, but I thought I'd mention it while I were here. All that washing up at the cafe, is it? It is. And do you know they provide me with rubber gloves, but I've got rubber hands as well now. And do you know, I used to be complimented on my hands at one time. They are the four and one five. Chemist will have some. Oh, I need some of it. In case I click at this here dance. And I won't have my rubber gloves with me then, will I? No. It's all right, love. It's all right, love. Yeah, she's a trial, that one. You want to watch it, she don't try it on with you. Right. Oh, mind you, you're safe now, aren't you, taking Rita to this dance? Look, I just thought it'd be nice if somebody asked her. I mean, it must be very difficult for a woman on her own. I'm sure it is. Mm. Right. Hello, Bob. Oh, hello. Not really. I still don't know whether I'm on me head or me heels. I wanted some bacon. Can you cut me a pound of streaky? Yeah, of course I can. The girls seem content enough, though. And, of course, Harry reigns. He knows everybody anyway, we and being on his round, so... It's just you. As per usual. Can I have a large white slice? Mm. I'll get used to it, I'm sure. Go on. Uh, I suppose we do tend to live in each other's pockets a bit round here. What do you say, Al? Hey. Oh, hi. I mean, uh, take this St. Valentine's dance, for instance. There'll be some round here will even go as far as taking the neighbours to that. A pound, will it? Yes, thanks. Yeah. You going down with Chippy? Well, I will if you oh, are, Listen, yeah. I'm going to go do some shopping. I'll see if Rover's OK. Yeah, I suppose so. Hey, well, tell me if you're going somewhere else. I don't want to be left there on my tod, you know. Rover's OK. All right, then. Hey, Ivy, will you wait for us, only... I want to be his nibs about that Henry Wakefield business. Oh, no, hang I'm on a minute. I'm not asking you to go in with me. Wait for us, that's all. Okay. Hello. Never heard, Mr. Baldwin. What, in your own time? Well, I didn't want others seeing. Oh, go on in. What is it? Well, don't think I'm here to cause trouble at all. Hello. Sounds ominous. Well, it's about that Henry Wakefield you've taken on. You do know he's a strike wrecker, don't you? I didn't know we had a strike. Not here, before he came. Oh, I see. Well, uh, I didn't know, but uh, so what? Well, union's not very happy about it. Oh, I'm sorry about that, because I'd like the union to be happy. I'd like everybody to be happy, including me. But sometimes it just doesn't work out, does it? Sometimes nobody's happy. Suppose not, no. Well, thanks a lot. I'm glad you told me. So you'll... I'll certainly bear it in mind. Yes, I will, yeah. Right. Thanks, Mr. Baldwin. I'd best go for my dinner, eh? Yeah, you do that. It is my turn. I'm positive it is, Ida. <laughs> two lagers, please. Sorry. Yes, two lagers. Yes, sir. Oh, I reckon bit, Bet's bit more than she can chew there. Mind what they say. 
once a barmaid, always a barmaid. Yeah, maybe. Now, listen, what exactly did Baldwin say? Because you still haven't told me right tail yet. Well, he said he'd look into it. Oh, he was in a funny mood. Anyway, I told him now, so I don't know. He's here. Uh, do you want to pay a what? <sighs> still in business, then? Thank you. Just. I think I might last till tonight with a bit of luck. How about you? I wish I could be that confident. Give us a scotch, will you, lump? Large, my brother. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Well, no, am I glad to see you. I've been trying to get you all morning. I wasn't there. I know you wasn't there. What are you going to have to drink? Uh, just a tomato juice, please. One tomato juice? We've got uh, one or two things to talk about, haven't we? One especially. Mm. Right, well, why don't you sit over there? I'll be with you in a minute. And uh, do you want anything to eat? I've already eaten. 153. Yeah, love. Keep the change. What's a kind old man? Jack, love. Yes, darling. Do you know what we forgot this morning? I can think of one or two things. Mixers. Do you think you could be an angel and get me a crate up from the cellar? Your slightest wish, but can I just finish this pile? Please? There'll be another waiting for you when you get by. Oh, and uh, Gloria. Yes, Ben. I really do think you need some exercise. What's attractively round today can be just plain fat tomorrow. Go and collect some empty. Oh, I don't think Bet likes me. She's jealous of your beauty. Well, I can't help that, can I? <laughs> you know, this is first for rubbing in where a customer has to fetch his own drink. Hey, I'm no customer. Temporary seller, man. Me, Bertie. Is that yeah. so? Oh, I... Don't take you long to get his feet on the table. Know, I'm like Kenny Del Lease, me, Bertie, lad. I hope her till I see a chance and a strike my life. Well, by well, the look he gave me as he went through the door, I thought, hello, it's the last I'm going to see of her. Nearly was. All my fault as well. See, I'd led him to believe I went to London on my own. Oh, dear. No mention of you being there. And I let the cat out of there. You did. Well, why didn't you give me the nod, for God's sake? Oh, I suppose I didn't want you to know I'd been deceiving him, in case you got the wrong idea as to why. So what happened? We had a right old row. Him saying I'd have to give it up and stop home. Me saying I couldn't. And both of us saying a lot more besides. You did tell him that there's quite a lot of money coming your way, I hope. No, it wouldn't have helped. Now, the only way I talked him round in the end was I said, look, if we'd had anything to hide, Mr. Baldwin wouldn't have said what he did, would he? Oh, well, that's me, innit? Open, honest, couldn't deceive anybody. <laughs> I said that as well. Good. So everything's OK. You're back in the team. If you still want me. Oh, that'll go, kid. If you can't find out if Hamster's in that lot, well, he deserves to starve. <laughs> right. See you later, Al. Yeah, all right, love. Hey, no rush, either. Right. That's uh, four pounds 45, then. I hope you're not going on my account. No, more on my husband's. Ah, that I can understand. He right. since he started doing windows, you know, he's got appetite like ours. Yeah, it'll be all this fresh air he's giving. Yeah, he's perked up in other ways than I'll. And I won't go into detail, don't expect you blush, do I? Mm. So that's uh, for what? 45. Oh. You'd be glad he shifted to an indoor job, then. What indoor job? Temporary settlement at Rovers. Oh, didn't you know? No, I didn't, love. Not so you just told me. Forty-five. <laughs> so? Thank you. Oh, heck. Hey, Mo. Find him out when you've got a minute, love. Day's work over there. Not before time either, whether we had first thing. Of course, you won't be an early bird, will you? You'll be more late nights and late mornings. Late mornings? You must be joking. I had to be up at the crack of dawn to see to a delivery. What you want is husband love. Don't you think I've got enough troubles? Where have you been? To the toilet. I am allowed to go there, aren't I? Not in opening hours. Move about more, you won't feel the need. See to them to in the snug. Hey! I just did myself a flipping injury on my cellar door down there. I mean, I am insured for this lark, am I? Not exactly, but I promise I'll rub it better. That'll do. And I promise I'll get you that pint I owe you, know. Great. There's no need to bother. Oh, hello, Vera. And what the hell do you think you're doing? I would, I would just... And don't tell me any lies. Temporary cellar, ma'am. It's there. She's conned you into you spending your time in here. It's about earning a living like you should be doing. He's a little treasure, this husband of yours. Oh, you haven't forgotten whose husband is, then? Well, I'm just giving him a lift, that's all. And how's she paying you? In pints? Or have you come to some other arrangement? What shall I? Hey, now, come on, Vera. No, I won't come on. And you're no, not no, stopping either. Keep, keep your voice down. He's only doing what Bet asked him. Well, he's going to start doing what I ask him in future, isn't he? Oh, me you. Mm. I've got a few words to say to you. Do you have to say all of you? Tell me you're playing me. Yes, I do. Well, is there some talk with your pint or what? No. <laughs> Thank you. 
Henry. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. Job you had before this uh, in a factory, was it? A foundry. Foundry. Well, a little bird told me you had a bit of trouble there before you left. Yeah. Something to do with a strike? Yeah. You know, Henry, I once tried getting blood out of a stone. It was easier than this. Sorry. Yeah, there was a strike. And I joined it like everybody else. But as the strike went on and on, I, I started to get into debt and... Well, I went back to work. But, of course, the other blokes, and I can understand it, they started to regard me as a black leg. Well, things got a little bit unpleasant, so... so I moved. Yeah, that's what the little bird said, more or less. Yeah, I knew word had got out. The shop steward lady was asking me about it. Do you want me to finish? Finish what? Working here. Well, do you want to? Well, no. But... In that case, I suggest you can doing what you're paid to do, and uh, we keep our fingers crossed and everything will be all right. Oh, Shirley. Did I tell you, you were absolutely fantastic the other day when you did that modelling job. Oh, thank you, Mr Baldwin. I was going to ask you to do it again. Oh, you're not, are you? Well, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Say, about an hour, OK? Oh, I feel that daft. Well, I tell you what, get that mate of yours from cutting, the big blonde girl. Oh, Donna. Yeah, with her with you, you'll be all right, won't you? Yeah, well, you know that top models are tall, don't you, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, they're also slim, young and beautiful, so... <laughs> Oh, hello. Everything all right? Well, I've sorted the pockets out, so I told him it was OK to go ahead and press them up. Oh, good. Can you get a couple of outfits that'll come somewhere near fitting Shirley on her mate? I want Ralph to see that they're as good on as they are off. Yeah, OK. Good. Oh, uh, you don't have to dash off after, do you? Well, I haven't got to be too long. You won't be. Just repairing the damage. Have you finished in there? But it's a relief to close the doors, isn't it? I know I'm thankful. Hey. Oh, definitely. It's jolly hard work running the pub. Hi, yeah. Uh, I don't suppose Jack will be helping out in future, will he? I'm sure he won't. <laughs> Pity. Do I detect a note of criticism? Criticism? What of? The way I handled it. No, of course not. What else could you have done? I suppose I could have tried to calm Vera down a bit, instead of taking her on like that. Bucket of cold water would have done the trick. I think I was half expecting somebody to come sailing out the back and take over. Salty town. Mrs Walker. Billy. Hey, you're the boss now. And I'm sure you'll get the hang of it in time. Anyway. It's time I wasn't here. I thought I'd treat myself to a new dress. For work, you know. Well, you can't keep appearing in the same old thing, can you? <laughs> See you tonight. And uh, I'll try to be on time again. Glory. Yeah? I don't think there's any point in you coming in at all tonight. Why? I'm sorry, love. But you've not got enough experience to work here. I need somebody I can trust to leave in charge for the odd hour. Well, you can leave me in charge. I mean, I'm not going to roll for the till or anything. No, you know. and you're not going to do much work either. I am sorry, love. I need somebody I can rely on. I'll send on what I owe you. You've never liked me, have you? It's got nothing to do with liking. Of course it has. You don't like the competition. I was warned you wouldn't. Well, don't worry. With me gone, you can take on somebody your own age, can't you? Ward for you, Mr. Oh, Baldwin. Right. Ralph! Nice to see you again, mate. And you. Well, Emily, can you rustle up for some coffee in about ten minutes? Of course. Ralph, well, I'd like to meet Christine Millwood, our new designer, someone you're going to be hearing a lot about. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Ralph, here's the chief buyer for Nightingales. <laughs> Not chief buyer, exactly. All right, I'm anticipating, but the thing is, he knows a good thing when he sees it. Uh, it's seeing it at the right price, it's a hard bit. You are going to like the price as much as the design. But I tell you what, before we get down to the nitty-gritty, I've got a couple of the girls to try a few outfits on, you know, so you can see them in the flesh sort of thing. Oh, great. Models as well. Well, we like to do things right. Well, they're not making them, are they? Yes, sir. Oh. Where's Shirley and Donovan? Well, they were here a minute since, Mr. Baldwin. I'll go and look for them. Uh, I'm still available, Mr. Baldwin. Oh. Where'd you get your ideas from, Christine? Oh, I just think what I'd like to wear and uh, imagine I'm designing for myself. Best way. Ah, oh, oh, there it goes. Ah, oh, it goes. Now, come on, just uh, walk up and down here for a minute, will you? Come you on. first. 
No, you. Why don't you both go together? Uh, come on, then. We haven't got all day. Oh, well, then. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. 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 What are you walking like that for? And do you think you could do any better? Yes, I could. You couldn't do any worse. All right, we can do without all that, can't we? Shirley, come and stand over here a minute, love. Oh, not with him watching. Oh, I want to shut his eyes. Come on, girl, I want to shut his eyes. Come Shirley! On. Ah, you can hold it now. <laughs> I don't believe it. Do you want me to do it again, Mr. Baldwin? Oh. I don't mind who's watching. No. They're not professional models, then. How did you guess? Well, thank you, girls. You were terrific. Absolutely terrific. <laughs> if you believe that, I believe I'll... Go in the office, sure. Well, I don't think them two's ever going to get to the top, do you? <laughs> hey, so we hope they haven't lost us order. Ooh, yeah. I haven't thought of that. <clears throat> right, Mrs Ogden, what will it be? Well, Port and lemon be very nice, thank you very much. I'm being treated. I should think so too. It's your birthday, isn't it? I'm sorry. I forgot clean about it this oh, morning. Oh, it's all right. I know you've got a lot on your plate. <laughs> By the way, I finally got round to sacking Gloria. Oh, yeah, I was wondering where she was. Oh, you are. I've been to learn fast, aren't you? You could say that, but I'll be all right as long as I can rely on you. Oh, definitely. Although I am getting on a bit, you know. <laughs> Don't talk about age, it's a sore point. <laughs> a bought lemon and a pint of bitter, please. It's on the house. Ah, oh, oh, isn't that nice? So, uh, Mr Baldwin said you were to take no notice of him then? Uh, yeah, he said to carry on, you know, just carry on. Well, I'm very pleased, cos I know Mr Baldwin. Well, you do know somebody when you're clean for him. And believe me, whatever he said, he'll stand by it. Thank you. Right, please, but When you're ready, there's no rush. Right, look. Where's your dad, by the way? Chained up outside, isn't he? Your mum's talking of getting him a kennel. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm sorry if I got him in lumber. Oh, don't worry, he'll wriggle himself out of it. He always does. I'm missing his muscles already. But you've always got mine, you know. Honest? Yeah, and I'm stronger than me dad. Right, you know. I could do with a bottle of port and a bottle of whiskey right now. You'll find them in a box of spirits on the table in back. Right. Mrs Ogden, uh, can I interest you in a ticket for our St Valentine's Eve dance? Well, uh, I might be more interested in two. Oh, better still. Uh, this doesn't mean I'm expecting you to escort me, you know. It's just if you happen to have nothing else on, well, uh, there'll be a spare ticket if it's needed. Well, let me get it. No, no, you'll do no such thing. Now then, person. Right. Well, if that doesn't take the flaming biscuit. What is it about my family that you can't leave alone? What is it, eh? You'd be husband in here slaving away this morning, and now you've got me son? Come on, we help him, Mum. Look, come round here. Come on. Go on, Terry. Now, Vera, what was it you wanted? A drink or a row? Because you can't have both. Me son, you keep them out of your clutches. Can we have three lagers, please, Matt? Certainly, ladies. And as for your son, Vera, I must say, he's a credit to you. He saw that I was stuck, and he offered to help out. Well, I should help for her. He ought to. That's where you've been brought up. So when she needs so much shifting, I can shift it, can I? Uh, no, thanks, Terry. It's all right. I think your mum would prefer it if you didn't. Oh, go on, then, if he likes. Are you sure, Vera? Because I don't want any more shouting over this. Yeah, of course, I'm sure. Right, then. Thanks, Terry, love. Thank you, Vera. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I know. I just thought it'd be a bit funny if we parked outside your door and then drove off again. And why should we do that? I thought we'd have a little drink of booze. You know, celebrate. We've nothing to celebrate, have we? I mean, you didn't place an order or anything. Oh, we will. They just want time to think about it. Anyway, never mind the excuses. I think we should stick together for a little bit longer. You said you'd give me a lift home. I still will. If that's what you really want. It's not a question of what I want. I think it is. Look, I've got a husband and a daughter expecting me back. And after what happened yesterday... All right, another night, then. But you do understand I'm not talking about business, don't you? I understand. Look, I'll have to go. I can walk from here. It's only around the corner. Another night, then? Yep. Another night. Just a 
fella to give us hand with heavy work. Barney? Oh, sorry, I didn't see you was on the phone. Right. Just so long as he's got two of everything that counts and he can keep his fingers out at Tilly, he'll do me. Okay, I'll leave it with you. I've not got much choice any road, have I? So. All that stuff to get up out at cellar and not a red-blooded male in sight. I thought Terry Duckworth was going to be doing all that. He's at work, isn't he? Not due back till dinner time. Like all the other fellas I know. Never there when you need them. Then I get this call from Betty. Betty? She's not coming in. Still got a bug or something. Oh, no. So who's going to help out here, then? Well, until I can get somebody else. It looks like the invisible man, doesn't it? You mean you're on your tad? That's the way it looks. And to think I actually wanted this flaming job. Oh, well, it's nice to hear somebody's happy in their work. Well, it's the only way to be, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Well, just as long as you don't wear that floor out before the dance tomorrow night, we don't want anybody falling through it. Well, there's one or two I wouldn't lose any sleep over, I can promise you. Present company accepted, I... Of course, yes. So what can I do for you? Well, it's more a question of what we can do for you. Hey? Alf's told me to tell you there's out special you want for tomorrow night. Will you let him know today sometime? Well, there's bound to be one or two bits and pieces. But most of the catering's being seen to by the ladies of the committee. Fine, fine. Just as long as you're not going to turn up at half past five wanting 200 bridge rolls and expecting us to produce them out of a hat. Oh, don't you worry, Percy. Something's better organised than that, I can promise you. I'm sure you are. Excuse me. Yes, young lady. Looking for me, were you? Not particularly. Oh? Just having a look round and see what goes on round here. Not a lot by the look of it. Well, not at the moment, no, but uh, come seven o'clock tonight, this place will be buzzing. Positively buzzing. Yeah, I can imagine. No school today. Not much point, is there? Half the teachers are off on some training course, so we've got most of the day for private study. We can do that at home. Hang on. What did you mean when you said you can imagine what it's going to be like in here of an evening? Well, I can imagine, can't I? Art, pottery, flower arranging, Spanish for beginners. Real mind-blowing stuff, isn't it? Oh, we do have a youth club here, you know. Ah, but only up to 16-year-olds, of course, yes. But you'd come into that category, wouldn't you? Thanks very much. So what do you want? I don't know. Somewhere to go. Meet me mates. Play a few records. Oh, we have the odd knees up here as well. I mean, take this dance tomorrow night, for instance. Yeah, I've seen the posters. What's the group, then? Group? You are having a group. Oh, it won't run into anything like that, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Even the Bert Howard Trio come at quite a price these days, if you can get them. I mean, the book up at this time of day, you know. Masonics, ladies' evenings, you, you name it. Now, we've got a disco lined up, love. Why don't you treat yourself to a couple of quids worth? You have a few laughs, if now tells. I don't think so, Tara, all the same. Well, suit yourself. I mean, if you don't fancy meeting the boys from round here. Perhaps I'll think about it. You do that. No, don't think too long. Tickets are going like hotcakes. Right, I'm off. Look, uh, I'll give that back place a good going over tomorrow. I'd stop and give you a hand, love, only I was due at Mrs Lowther's 20 minutes since. A tiny road, older. Right, I'm on my way. You want to get on to the brewery, you know. Get them to sort some it out. Oh, aye, that'd look great, wouldn't it? Only been in the job a fortnight and scracking for help already. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Still, Aunt and Betty will be back tomorrow, and I'll try and come in a bit earlier than all. <laughs> oh. Uh, Miss Lynch? Uh, no, no, not me, love. Over there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you wanted me? Uh, I heard you were looking for a fella. You know, cellar work, bar and that. You've come after a job? Well, I'm not here for the scenery, love. Well, I don't know. Do you at Mrs. Lowther's 20 minutes since we're older? Oh, yes. Right, I'll see you. Mm -hmm. Have you got any experience of the licensing trade, then? Uh, you could say that, I suppose, yeah. Oh. Well, three years at Union Arms, and before that, three tons Canal Street. Union Arms? So mm. that's where you are now? If I were there now, I wouldn't be looking for a job, would I? So why did you leave then? New gaffer brought his family in. <coughs> Out I go, not so much as a thank you. So you could start right away. Aye. If I happen to be suited. Hey, Ivy, do you want topping up? Me? Hey? What's up with you today? You've been 200 flipping miles away since you clocked in this morning. I reckon she's in love. And you could be right. It can have the same effect on you as taking an overdose of sleeping pills. <laughs> you speak for yourself. Hey, come on, top us up, kid. What did you last one day of? <laughs> oh, so you're not going to do anything about it? Well, why should I? I mean, I've no beef with Henry Wakefield. 
As far as I know, neither has anybody else found it. But he's a strike breaker, isn't he? Somewhere else! You wouldn't have known anything about it if it hadn't been for that anonymous letter. Whoever wrote that was twisted. They're just trying to cause trouble for Henry, you lot and this factory. Don't you see that? But he still broke the strike and as a good fellow trade unionist... He's I'm not even in the same union! Well, I'm not denying he did it, but... Well, he had his reasons, believe you me. Now, if you want my advice, you do what you, sh you should have done right from the start. Chuck that letter in the back of the grate where it belongs. Oh, I see. And that's your last word on the matter? Yes, it is. Oh, here, I'll get there. No, 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 you're all right. I want to get some hot pot as well. Oh, right. You'll be lucky. What? I've got a few hot pies and that's your lot. I've only got one pair of hands, Ken. I can't be out here serving you lot and in back making hot pot and all, can I? I thought Hilda reckoned you'd got a fella coming round. I've had a chat with one, yeah. Yeah, I take it he didn't have much to offer. Oh, he knows his way around all right and he'd suit me down to the ground. What's the problem? He's not sure I'm his type, so he's gone away to think about it. In the meantime, I shall just carry on doing my impression of the Lone Ranger. Oh, well, I hope you don't think I'm going to make a habit of this. I should be at home by rice. I've got a lot of revising to do. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get a couple of bottles of takeout and I'll come and help you. Thanks for the offer, but I think I can manage better without your help. Terry Cock, am I glad to see you? There's a couple of crates at the bottom of the cellar steps. Fetch them up before you go, will you, love? Right, bet. No problem. So what's your poison? Just orange juice, thanks. Have a proper drink. It is a proper drink. It's better for you than that stuff you drink, anyway. You know what I mean. Have a vodka or summer. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come. OK, OK. Orange juice and a pint, please, Ben. Right, love. You happy now? You know, you've got it dead cushy, you working from home. Oh, yeah, dead cushy. I've had me head in a book since half past six this morning. My kid sister's bursting me eardrums with that cassette player of hers. And my mum's jumping down her throat every five minutes. You can always come round my place, can't you? You don't give up, do you? No, I don't. 30 quid? How many do you get for that? Why are you clown? 30 quid for a dress and probably won't be enough material to make a decent handkerchief. Well, it's not often I get something new, Brian. Anyway, it's not all that much to pay. Not really. Not for a decent dress. Well, I'm just surprised you think I'm <coughs> splashing out to go to Percy's up, that's all. Well, it's a night out, isn't it? Must admit we don't get many of those these days. A night out? If Percy's got out to deal with it, it'll be more lively at the chapel arrest. Are you coming to this dude tomorrow, then? Sucked his rave up. You must be joking. It's an aid of a good cause. Mrs. Bishop's League of Friends. Well, not Mrs. Bishop's League of Friends. The Hospital League of Friends. Mrs. Bishop's help helps run it. It's only a couple of quid. I'm oh, sorry, mate, but you won't catch me there if it was giving the tickets away. I might think about it. Yeah. You? Why not? Yeah. It's something to do, isn't it? Well, yeah. And but... it's not a bad way of meeting folk, either. Or getting to know them a bit better. <laughs> I'd have thought you'd have been all in favour of that. Twisted me arm, Curly, mate. Put us down for a couple. I thought you weren't interested. I don't know where you get these ideas from, Curly. I really don't. <sighs> said that there's quite enough room in them. I don't think there's enough room. No problem. You know. In fact, you'll probably have them on your desk before you can turn down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have uh, something on similar lines pretty soon, and you will be the first to know, I promise. Yeah. Okay, mate. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Yeah. Bye. Good news, I take it. The best. He's just placed an order. Big oh, one. That's great, Mike. We've got some celebrating to do. Lunch? Unless you can think of anything better. You're going to buy me lunch every time we get an order. Who said I'm buying? Here, get your coat on. Where are we going? Rovers? The Rovers to celebrate the first big order of our partnership. Give me credit for a bit of style. <laughs> Sorry. No, I thought we might try uh, the Skinner's Arms behind the abattoir. Oh, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, you lot. Got something to tell you. Oh, you're off out for lunch? Yeah, but that's not it. Oh, you're not coming back after. We just had Ralph Ward on the phone. We have cracked it. I just thought you'd like to know. Hey, I told you it wasn't just my buddy, you fancy. Oh, we're pleased to hear it, Mr. Baldwin. See you lot later. Yeah. Hey, oh, do you hear that kid? We'll be quits then. Yeah. Well, I'm glad somebody's got something to be happy about. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. What's up with you today? Do you know you're about as much fun as a crack drain? I'll tell you what's up with me. That fella that's just gone out at door, you're Mr. Wonderful has just taken on a flaming strike breaker yeah, yeah. to work alongside of us. That's what's up with me. Strike breaker? What are you on about? She's on about Henry Wakefield. Henry? He won't say a bill to a ghost. <laughs> it's true, Vera. You remember that trouble at Foundry last year? Well, it was that for months. <laughs> Not Henry Wakefield, it seems. He was one of them that went back to work. Sold his mates out? That's our Henry. And Baldwin knows about it? Yes, Baldwin does know. And what's he going to do about it? A big fat nothing. Because as far as he's concerned, Henry Wakefield can do no wrong. Well, not here, any road. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see what the girls think about it, won't it? <laughs> Yes. Fancy again? Me? Well, you can't be any worse than him, can you? Oh, not very much. No, Tar, I'm off. Well, you've only just come, haven't you? I said ten minutes and I meant it. You've got time for another drink. Some other time, Terry. I've got to get back. I'll see you. And thanks for the drink. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. See you. <laughs> nice girl. She's a cracker, mate. Isn't it funny how you can sense when you've got something in common with folk, eh? It certainly is. Doing A-levels, interest in sciences. A-levels? What are you on about? I never did any A-levels. I did. Hiya! I hey, thought I wasn't coming. Yes, you probably wish you hadn't. Eh? Hey? The hot pot's off, no Betty. Oh, what a pity. Now you'll have to take me to that nice little wine bar on Station Road. And that's after you bought me a drink. That is a fitting feathers here. Right. Tar love. Are you ready, Bert? Well, let's get going. <clears throat> I don't know where my mum's got to. Well, maybe she's gone shopping first. She definitely said she'd be here. Is this Ivy you're talking about? Yeah. You haven't seen her, have you? No, but I reckon she might be a bit, yeah. There was something about a meeting going on at the factory. Meeting? What about? Search me. Well, wherever it is, it must be important. Hey? Eh? Well, they're having it in their own time. Ta-ra. <laughs> so, well, we've got to have a go, haven't we? Over here now. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh. All right, all right. Oh. Can we get started? <laughs> Look, quiet. Let's have a bit of bush. <laughs> well... I expect you're wondering why this meeting's being called. Oh, come on, I didn't get on with it. It says lunch hour, you know. Well, it's been brought to my notice that a member of the staff, or we're working with at this moment... What she's trying to say is we all know Henry Wakefield, don't we? Yeah. Well, he's a strike breaker. Oh. And we're here to decide what we're going to do about it. Who's oh, running this meeting, Vera? Yeah. Oh, get on with this it. Is all about? Well, Henry Wakefield. He was one of the fellas that went back to work at Foundry last year while the strike was still on. It's not our factory, is it? But Baldwin still knows about it. And as far as he's concerned, Henry Wakefield's as clean as a whistle. Oh, well, and is. that's what this meeting's about. Do we want to carry on working with a man that betrayed his mates? Do we have to slap? Or do we want to bend Baldwin's arm and make him get shut of Henry Wakefield? Yeah, well, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's all a storm in a blooming teacup. Oh. Ah, oh, now, come on, you've got to eat. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ogden, I'm not hungry. Honest, I'm not. Perhaps I'll have pie for me tea. Will you have another cup of tea? Yeah. Yes, please. <coughs> now, look, worrying about this isn't going to help anybody, is it? Least of all you. I know, but I can't help it, can I? I mean, suppose they refuse to work with me or send me to Coventry or something. I don't think I could stand that, working with people who won't talk to me. Yeah, yeah, but, well, didn't it happen at the foundry, like? Ah, yeah, but I had my mum then, didn't I? Oh. The rest didn't matter. But, I mean, across the I don't know anybody, do I? Well, I do. Now, there might be one or two hotheads, but most of them are all right. And once they know the facts, well, I mean, what have you ever done to them? Oh, Look, can we have a vote? Yeah, hey, it is this dinner hour, you know. Yeah, no. Yes, and it is this man's future and all, Vera. But what's it done for you all of a sudden? He's done no for me. Exactly. But it's not done me any harm either. <laughs> yeah. We've no complaints against Henry Wakefield, none of us. Oh, no. And not until much. we do have, I reckon we'll leave him be. Whatever he did in past, it's got no to do with us. Well, I reckon she's right, you know. Oh. Yeah. Hang on a minute. Look, can we have a vote for Pete's sake? Hey, oh, Flory's yeah. got something to say, and then we'll have a vote. Go on, Flory. No complaints about Henry Wakefield, you say? No. What he's done in past is not to do with us, you say? Well, let me tell you summit. That strike at Foundry had plenty to do with me. My lad was in that strike. And the hardship him and his missus went through was nobody's business. There were fellas like Henry Wakefield that helped it to drag on so long. Oh, Ivy's asking us to give this fella a chance. Did he give my lad a chance? Or his missus? Or his mates? Did he eck us like? Tell you there's no way I'm working with a fella like that. Right. Well said, Flory. Now look, can we have a vote on it? Hey, just hang on. Hang on, just a minute. 
You do all realise what's going to happen if we decide we're not working with Henry Wakefield, don't you? Mm. Well, of course we do. Yeah. It's down the road, Sharpish. Yeah. Or else Baldwin don't get another tap out of us. Yeah. Oh, well, that's brilliant. That is, isn't it, Vera? Mm. Stop him working when we've just landed the biggest order we've had for months. Oh, we yeah. might as well cut us on flaming throats. No. Oh, and do you think Baldwin's going to risk an order like that over one blow? <laughs> no. No, look. It's been proposed that we do not want to work with Henry Wakefield. Now, all them in favour, show you hands. Right. All them against. Right. That's it. It goes. Thank goodness for that. Hello, Mrs. Bishop. I was just thinking about you. Really? Indeed, I was, yes. Now, I might be going through the motions and getting this place ready for tonight, but uh, I've got your dance firmly fixed in my mind, I can promise you. Oh, that's what I came to see you about. Oh? Well, you did say you'd be acting as, uh, well, sort of MC. Oh, there's no sort of about it, Mrs. Bishop. No, everything will be conducted with the utmost decorum. I can promise you that. You can rely on me for it. Yes, I'm sure I can. Well, I thought it might be useful to let you have this list. It's the names of the principal guests who will oh, be coming yes. along. Oh, Chairman of the League of Friends, a couple of people from the Hospital Management Committee. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Well, I was hoping that you and I uh, would be in fairly close contact for most of the evening. Well, yes, I suppose there is that possibility. You do dance, I take it? Not very well, I'm afraid. Oh, well, not to bother. In my arms, you look like a champion. I'm a bronze medalist, you know. Did I ever tell you about that? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do seem to recall you saying something. Uh, on... <laughs> I thought I'd find you here. Oh, it's you. Wasn't it nice to be wanted? I'd have had the red carpet out for you, but I'm busy, very busy. I can see that, and it can be very tiring, can't it, Yassin? Oh, it was business, Mrs Pierce, I can assure you. Anyway, I'm just off. Oh, don't go dashing off on my account. I'll have all time in world to chat to him tomorrow. Eh? I know I said I didn't fancy going to this here dance and standing about like a spare part. I'm very wise too. Ah, well, I've changed my mind. Change your mind? Well, it seems like everybody else is going. And as Gail says, you're not likely to be tied up all night, are you? Oh, she did, did she? Ah, so go on, give us a ticket. Well, I'm very sorry. Sorry? Hmm. They've all gone. Last one was born for at dinner. But that's marvellous news. Hmm. So a couple of hours ago, you know, you'd have been in with a shout, but now... Oh, well, in that case, I'd better let you have a few... What's that? Tickets. I've still got one or two left. Um, just the one, you said, Mrs Pierce. Well, that's right, love. Just the one. There's one of them. Do you know, for a minute, I thought I'd come back to the wrong place. Sorry? See all this lot working away like beavers. If that's the way you're going to celebrate big orders, we'll have to get some more. Any messages, Ivy? Uh, no, Mr. Mulway. Good, well, keep up the good work. It seems that at last you found a way of making an old man very happy. Mm -hmm. Well, go on. Uh, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah. Can I have a word? Yep. Go on. I'm listening. Where were you? Oh, uh, right. Uh, see you in a minute. Well, go on. What's bothering you lot? Henry Wakefield, that's what's bothering us. Oh, not him again. Well, I put it to it, girls, and... You've had a meeting? Well, you didn't give him much choice, did you? And he's got to go. What, you want me to fire him? Like now? Well, I'm sorry, Vera, but I can't oblige because he happens to be on an errand for me at the moment and I don't think he'll be back tonight. Well, then it probably doesn't worry you a lot, does it? You probably want me to fire him when he's not here to speak up for himself. Well, he can speak up till he's blue in the face. Makes no odds to us. If he stays, we're out. And that goes for the rest of the girls, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah. Right, then, where do you want it? Just put it down there. Sounds very lovely. Out else before I go. Not the second thing, Cobble. Right, see you later. See you, and yeah, ta -ta again. Still on your own, then? What? Talk about Custer's last stand. So if you find yourself at a loose end for a couple of hours, Alf, I can always find you a penny. Oh, I'm sorry, love. No, I've got parks and cemeteries at seven o'clock. Say no more. If it comes to a choice between parks and cemeteries and spending the night behind bar with me, no contest. Am I right, Alf? <laughs> You're going to this dance. But don't say it like that. I'm not in my dotage yet, you know. Hey, oh, hey, 
you know, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm glad you're going. Uh, would it be cheeky to ask who you're going with? It would, and it's Alf. Ah, very nice. Well, it will be if he keeps his size tens to himself. Because if he comes within two feet of my corns, I'll scream the place <laughs> down, I promise There you. is no chance of that. They don't call me Twinkle Toes Roberts down at Town Hall for nothing, you know. Mm. Are you going? Up to now, yeah. Up to now? Brian's not keen. Yeah, well, to tell the truth, I mean, it's not the sort of do I'd normally break my neck to go to. Don't right? believe a word of it. She nearly snatched my hand off when I told her. Of course I did. Rather that or going with me, but... <laughs> Oh, oh, yes. Victor. Victor. Oh, lovely. Pint of best when you're ready, love. Coming up, Oh, it's you. Well, don't look so surprised. I thought I might as well sample the ale if I'm going to be selling it. Eh? The job. It's still going, isn't it? Are you taking it? Well, I don't reckon I'll do much better for myself. You do. When do I start? When can you start? Well, do I get time to finish my yes. pint? Yes, exactly. Night. Night. You know, if you don't want this, I can always give it to the cat. Are we going to be celebrating this order forever? At every available opportunity. It's time I wasn't here, you know. Ah, but you are here, aren't you? Here, cheers. This is the first of many, I hope. Cheers. cheers. You know, I still can't believe it's happening. Only a few weeks ago, it was just an idea. Now it's here for all the world to see. Well, not all the world. Not this week, anyway. Hey, thanks, Mike for everything. I do appreciate it. You wait till we really get going. There's someone else. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is this a private party, or is anyone welcome? Dave. I've been looking for you, haven't I? Thought I might have found you in the pub over the road, but the girl said you hadn't left yet. I can see why, can't I? This is very cosy, isn't it? Very cosy indeed. We were just having a drink to celebrate our first big order. Another five minutes, I'd have been on my way. Yeah, that's right. There's another glass in here. You might as well join us. No, thanks. I'm sorry to break up the party, but my wife has other things to do, like a home to go to, a daughter to look after. Get your coat. Look, Dave, I don't know what I you're said, thinking. get your coat, Chris. We really do have something to celebrate, you know. The first big order to come out of our partnership. Well, I hope you made the most of it, because as far as I'm concerned, it's the last. Oh, no, come on. Chris has got a great future ahead of us. That's right. As my wife and Kate's mother, just as it used to be before she met you. Now, listen. If you think there's anything more between us than just business... Please, then... Mike, don't. It'll only make matters worse. I'll phone you tomorrow. I wouldn't bet on that if I was you. Come on, Chris. Good night, Mike. We had a vote, didn't we? And... Baldwin knows how we feel about it. Look, Flory, we've got work to do in here, and I dare say you have as well. Hey, I'll see him as soon as he comes in. Yeah. Mm. You do. Tell him either that rat's out or we are. Right. She's dead bitter, isn't she? Well, she's every right to be, aren't she? Her son were on strike for four months while that Henry Wakefield was scabbing. Where is the any road, the little swine? I saw Henry taking the van first thing this morning. Yeah, well, it'd save us a lot of bother if he collided with a double-decker. hey -o. Morning, girls. Morning, Mr. Baldwin. Good morning, Emily. Morning. What is it, Ida? Well, the girls want your answer. Answer? I don't even know what the question is. Yes, you do. Henry Wakefield, like I told you yesterday, this little girl said they're not going to work with him. Oh, it's marvellous, isn't it? The moment I get things a little bit hopeful around here, you're through that door trying to wreck it. I only do what the girls ask me to do, and they've told me to tell you it's either him or them. We won't strike, surely <laughs> not over this. Now listen, if you do strike, you'll be hurting yourself more than anybody else. You know that, don't you? You should be out there telling them that. They stand to make a lot of money over this new line, you know? It's not the money, it's the principle. And they voted that they're not going to work with him, and that's the feeling. And in my opinion, if he's still here tomorrow, they will strike. I'll tell you straight, Mr. Bowen, I'm not pushing this. But that's how the feeling is. And I said I was going to tell you, and I have. It was Mrs. Bishop's idea, actually. She, she thought you might be glad of a helping hand setting up for tonight's dance. Uh, very considerate, that woman, you know. She's the only one round here who'd even bother to think, well, I'd need some help today. Community centre, right? 
Well, it says so outside if you can read, and if you can't, the adult and literacy class, Bessie Street, Tuesday nights. <laughs> no, I'm right then. Uh, Barry Pollard. Oh, I always spoke on telephone, didn't we? Percy Zogie. Yeah, that's oh. right. Your friendly disc jockey. Oh, God. Yeah. A rave up. Guaranteed. <laughs> it's not a rave up we're after. It's, a, it's an effort on behalf of the hospital. Don't worry. Even if the bed fast hell happens, Anson, their feet will be steaming. Uh, pull me belly off, will you? What's this? Kaiser Bill? Yours truly. That's the name I work under. When I was a young man, I served in the British Army alongside old soldiers who fought against Kaiser Bill. Not me, Mr Sugden. They must have been talking about some other bloke of the same name. I'll just go and get the rest of my gear. Hey, fancy calling yourself Kaiser Bill. Where did you find him, Mr Sugden? Advert in paper said he were cheap. Kaiser you... Bill. Do you reckon he's been unpatriotic then, do you, Mr Sugden? Well, there is that aspect to it, of course, but, uh, I mean, if you go and pick a name like that, why pick a loser? Here you are. Are you going to this dance tonight, either? Yes, look, Brian and me and Gail's going. Gail's got a babysitter. I don't know why you're bothering. There'll be no talent there. I'd go myself. I thought there were a bit of trout. I've uh, gone off your jack, have you? Gone off, eh? Uh, it's Kayla at half at time. Hey, you know, that thing on the telly, uh, normal service will be his own as soon as possible. They wrote that for him. Oh. Your Jack knew what you said about him, Vera. He does, I've told him. <laughs> oh, I hope. Is that enough for you, Rena? I said, is that enough? Yes, it is enough. The rate she works, that'll last her a week. Don't talk to him, I'm not. Oh, come on, Vera, you have to speak to people. But he's not people, is he? He's a scab. What did you have to say that for? Because that's how I feel. And most of us do, and well, you'll know it, Ivy. Hello. Ah, I want to see you. Did you get that stuff from Stockport? Yeah. Good. Well, you better sit down. There's a couple of things we've got to talk about. I won't bother. I only came in here to give you my notice. You're giving me notice? Well, don't you want the job anymore? I dare say you know why. I don't have to explain, do I? No. I don't suppose you've got a job to go to? Must be kidding. Didn't think you would, am Well, I'm not going to try and talk you out leaving. No, I didn't think you would somehow. No, Ida tells me that some of the girls were thinking of going on strike because of you. Well, that kind of trouble is the last thing I can afford right now. But, um, I will do you a favour. What's that? I won't accept your notice. I'll give you the sack instead. That way you can go straight onto the doll. And uh, you've no need to work the rest of the week out. I'll, uh, I'll have a word with Emily and do the necessary. I'll, um, I'll ask her to put in an extra week's wages. I, I dare say you can use it. Well, you didn't expect me to do your fighting for you, did you, Sunshine? Well, no. I mean, I don't really think that you want me to, did you? I mean, you're not really the fighting sort, are you? Terrible this dance tonight. It'll be a cross between Listen with Mother and Old Time Night at the Derby and Joan Club. I don't know why you're bothering going. I'm going for the same reason as you are, Sunshine, because Andrea Clayton's going. I'm trying to get to go down to Manchester for the past week, but she doesn't like going out in the week, though. The only reason she's going to this dance tonight is because it's only across the road. The reason why she doesn't like going to Manchester is because it's too time consuming. She's swatting like mad for her A levels. Stupid, isn't it? What does a nice looking girl like that want to be filling her head with all that chemistry rubbish for? That's a very sexist remark, Teddy. I think you're a male chauvinist pig on the quiet. There's no one on the quiet about it, mate. I'm proud of it, me. Well, I'm not. I think women are equal. Different, but equal, and should be treated with respect. Yeah, I've noticed that. Whereas you have got a deep, hostile, sexist attitude towards them. In fact, women should steer well clear of you and be deeply attracted to me. In fact, women must be stupid deep down, and there's no point being nice to them. Surely. There's hope for you yet, mate. <laughs> anyway, I still think... You know, at one time, three old ladies monopolised that snug. Now it's lads. I dare say the main topic of conversation hasn't changed much, though. Oh, aye. What topic's that, then? Everybody's favourite. You know, young or old, male or female. It's them. The other lot. The opposite what's it? I shall have to stop you going to these youth clubs. Morning. Been paid early, have you? Yeah, I'll have a whiskey. Make it a large one. Is that a No. Oh. Just being friendly. 
Pardon me for breathing. We're noted for it round here, you know, being friendly. Yeah, I noticed. OK, you lot, pay attention. There's something I want to tell you. Will you be quiet a minute? Right then. Henry Wakefield. Ida tells me that some of you girls don't want to work with him anymore. Not some of us. All of us. We've had a vote. That's right. The vote went against him. <laughs> All right, can you keep your voices down so I can hear myself speak in my own factory, do you reckon? Well, you may be interested to know that I've sacked him. So you've got what you wanted? Well, it's what he deserves. Oh, you're pleased about that, are you, Vera? Another bloke on the dole. Well, you want something for his job, won't you? So that'll be another bloke off the door, won't it? Well, it may interest you to know that Henry came to me and he handed in his notice. He didn't want to work with you lot here anymore because of the way you felt about him. But I wouldn't accept his notice. I gave him the sack can, so he can go straight on the dole. At least he's got that. That's all I wanted to tell you. I hope you lot are pleased with yourself. Well, I feel lousy. Oh, gosh, Shirley. Look, what you bothered over his job for, eh? He didn't bother when other blokes were on strike. You yeah, tried to save their jobs, did he? Yeah. Give it a rest, Vera. Like Baldwin says, we've got what we want. Yes, and Flory Smethers will be dead chuffed and oh. all. And so will all the girls. I'll tell you what, we'll be out celebrating. Well, I hope you enjoy yourselves, Vera, cos I feel lousy. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Right, that's it. Oh. Thank God for that. It's been a long day, this has. Hey, every day's a long day as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and this one's been worse than usual, hasn't it, Vera? And you know reason why. Oh, my conscience is clear. I bet any Wakefield can't say that. Oh, come on, kid, let's get gone. Come on, then. Oh, oh hello. hello. But Mr. Bowman's in his office if you want him. Hello. Well, you're the last person I expected to see. On your own. You mean it's Dave in hot pursuit, don't you? Yeah, something like that. No, he knows I'm here. We had a long talk last night. Dave knows he wasn't being fair to me. Maybe I wasn't being fair to him. But I want you to understand, Mike, that as far as you and I are concerned, this relationship is purely professional. I made Dave some promises, and I intend to keep them. Well, I haven't made anyone any promises, and I don't intend to start now. Well, I just want things to be clear, Mike. Anything you want from me, as a designer, I'm ready, willing and able. But only as a designer, and that's it. Right, that's the pot sided. Now, I've only got to get myself ready and then we can go and enjoy ourselves. Mrs Ogden, I'm not in mood for this, do. Oh, now, we've been through all this and you said you'd try. You've been and got changed and everything. You look very smart and all. I don't want to go, I'm sorry. Now look, Henry. I know you're depressed. Well, you're entitled to be. You've lost your job. But you've got to hold your head up, you know. That's why you ought to go to this dance like we arranged when we got the tickets. Otherwise, then what got you the sack will think they've won. They have won. No, only if you let them. Now, if you still hold your head up, they've won out. On the road, I'm definitely going. And you know, I don't feel very much like going on my own. All right. All right. But I need a drink first. I want to go down to the pub. You'll find me in there. So don't forget, cars and girls, we're here to have fun. And once again, this is your friendly old cars of Bill for Paul and Timmy, saying hi and howdy. And tonight, the good time we shall have. And that is not a cars of Bill as ways of making you enjoy yourself. And this is just the record to get you out going. <laughs> 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 
Kaiser Bill, have you ever heard out like it, eh? I said to him, do you know who Kaiser Bill was? I said, he said, of course I do, he said. I said, excuse me, I said, I don't think you can do, I said. Well, that was telling him. Well, it's beyond all reason. I don't think he's so bad myself. Anyway, you did pick him, Mr. Sugden. He was your choice. And to be quite frank, I was afraid you'd have got somebody terribly old-fashioned. Yes, so was I. Me? Old-fashioned? I'm not old-fashioned. Particular, yes. Hello. Oh, I do hope we're going to have a good turnout. I, I know we've sold quite a lot of tickets. Well, of course we have. It's for a good cause, isn't it, the hospital? Well, I know, Mr. Sugden, but I hope people didn't just buy tickets for that reason. I want them to enjoy themselves as well. Oh, excuse me. Uh, well, we're it? certainly going to. Starting now. Come on, Ken, how are you fixed for shaking a leg? You, two legs. Oh, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> Babysitter? Oh, I've got a babysitter. It's a husband I haven't got. He's working late at the garage, he says. Well, he is. If he says he is, that's what he's doing. He'll get along as soon as he can, Gail. Oh, well, we're in tonight to the whole night. I mean, all the nights we're not going anywhere. That's what he's been working Well, it's not always easy to arrange work when it's convenient, love. I know. <laughs> it's annoying all the same. Why are you going to dance? He's on the own. How do you mean? You're not on your own. You're with me, love. Your mother-in-law. I'm putting another scotch in there. A large one and a bottle of light. Oh, no, no, thank you. I'm all right. Go on. Hey, yeah. Don't you think we'd better be getting across the road? I'm going to have another one. Don't you think you ought to go a bit easy, Henry? I mean, you don't generally drink much, do you? Don't you worry about me. You go across to dance and I'll come over in a bit. Yes, well, I, I think I will. You will come over, though, won't you? I'll be there. Don't you worry. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Then. Hilda, don't you think he's giving it some stick, your lad, you? Yeah, well, he's upset. And you can't blame him, can you? I mean, you'd be upset if them you worked with had got you the sack. Oh, well, do say as how you won prizes for dancing, person. That's correct, yes. I took a bronze in Blackburn, uh, 1953, coronation, yeah. What should be dancing? I do like dancing with the fella that knows what he's doing. Well, it's like anything else. If you're going to do something, do it proper and not at all. There's plenty of room on floor. You wouldn't be crowded. Oh, I'm, not, about you. I'm not surprised the room is this fella's playing. I've got some wonderful dance records in my flat. Geraldo, Roy Fox, uh, Monty Barney. Now, you remember all them, of course. You're going back a fair way now. No, but not too far for your one to thought. I mean, look at you. You must be my age, easy. You're not old, are you, Percy? How about it? What? Dancing. Oh, I'm too busy. I have too many things to do at the moment. You know what he has told you? He's a teaser. Come on, love, I'll bet you can do this, can't Oh, you? I don't think so, Mrs. Pierce. Go on, of course you can. I'm not going to eat. Yeah, I only want to lick in the book. I'm a rotten dancer, Mrs. Pierce. You only want practice. Oh, would you excuse me? I think your friends have come. And you're another. <laughs> That's a lovely country in Western Shire. For all you little hillbillies out there, folks, I know there's thousands of you. Hey, Curly Boy, please. And now Hello. I'm Hi. This is going to be really pathetic, I can tell. How's the swatting going, Andrea? I don't want to talk about it. I came here to forget about it. Let's give it a whirl, shall we, eh? Really, really pathetic. Yeah, pits. Well, it's here. What's it like, anyway? I don't know. It seems all right. Oh, all right, we'll see you later. Hello, Hilda. Is Henry not with you then, now? How's he feeling? Well, how would you feel? Oh, I'm very sorry about what happened, Hilda. Yes, well, they're too fond of that over at that factory. They got me fired years ago, you know. Yeah, well, I was on Henry's side. I didn't want him to be sacked. Yes, well, I expect they'll all say that. Hello, Mike. Hello, Don. Give us a large scotch, will you, please? Oh, hello. How long's he been there? Too long. He's drowning his sorrows. And he's got some, poor devil. You having one? <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah. So, do you have a drink? No, thanks. I've had all I want to from people around here. Well, I wish you a lot of luck, and uh, if, if there's anything I can do... No, you've done more than enough. Much more than enough. He's well gone, isn't he? 
So take your partners now, there's another one. You'll love this. It says here. Hello. Do you know what time it is? It's not my fault. It's supposed to be a dance, Brian. Have your dead stupid study like a spare part? There are nickels for one. I wrote down only at 56. Oh, come on, there was a good customer. What could I do? It just means there's no point in his ever going anywhere. But if you think I've been enjoying myself, then you're crackers. I am crackers. I must be. Come on, let's have a dance. The mood's gone. Oh, what the hell are we flaming come at you for then? Goodness knows. I'm going home. Hey, old pal, Brian. Hey, what time do you call this then, eh? Don't you start. Hey? Gail! I'm going home! Fine, you do that. Go for a flaming drink. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you like. Oh, hey, not bad, are you? I think I need a bit more practice. Oh, no. It's right what they say about you bin men, though, isn't it? How do you mean? Oh, you've got natural rhythm. It's in your blood. Hey. Okay. Hiya, Percy. This will never be popular, you know. This is not what folk want. I bet you could teach these youngsters a thing or two. How about it? Well, you picked a bad time. I've got an announcement to make. Could I have the uh, microphone? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've got an announcement. I've got an announcement. Hey, I've got an equipment. Henry, come away. I'm not talking about Mrs. Ogman now because she's the salt of the earth. No, I am going to say this. The rest of you, you're a miserable lot. You're aiming to be dead friendly, but you're hypocrites all on you. As soon as somebody's down, you put boot in. First chance you get, you stab them in back. That's enough of that, thank you. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. What I was going to say, the refreshments are being served in the committee room. Now, there's no need to dash, there's plenty for everybody. On with the dance. What's up with him? He was a cabaret, wasn't he? One of these uh, alternative comedians. Is it true what he said? Are you really a rotten lot around here? You're joking, aren't you? We can't do enough for people around here. Now, take me, for instance. You were ever stuck for a bed for the night? Come to me and I'll not charge you. <laughs> He doesn't really mean it, you know, he's just upset, that's all. I, I think I'd better go and see if he's all right. Don't worry about it, Tilda. A drop too much to drink, that's all. Yeah, I think I'd best see if he's all right. All right, well, Ken will go with you, won't you? Ken? Yeah, yeah, of course I will. Oh, thanks very much, Ken. I'll just get me covers. Henry? Doesn't look as though he's here. Well, he wasn't in the Rovers. He's probably gone for a walk around, a bit of fresh air will do him good. Oh, Luke. Here's his key. That means he's not coming back. Well, where would he go? Oh, I don't know. He hasn't got anywhere to go. This is the only place he had. Just look at him. He's been dodging me all night. I feel like asking for my money back. Oh, we can't have that, Mrs. Pierce. And anyway, the hospital fund needs the money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this dance is a lady's excuse me. Excuse me. This is a lady's excuse me. I want to dance. I've been wanting a dance for the all night. Well, you've got a tongue in your head, haven't you? Come on. <laughs> Listen, I'm off now. It's early, yeah? Yeah, I know, but I'm taking Andrew home and uh, he'll take me around a long time. So he lives over the road? I know. Do yourself a favour, Curly. Study how I go about these things. See ya. You're not a bad dancer, I'll say that. Thanks. Oh, you're very light on your feet, considering the way you're built. That's right. Go on, spawn me night. OK, we're ready. She's not coming, is she? You're not coming, are you? Who wants to stay here for? It's a pathetic dance. I knew it would be. Come on, I want to get home. 
Good night. Nice one, Seri. Shut up. <laughs> I've got a sister. Pardon? Well, I haven't got a sister and I live quite away from her. Oh, do you? The other side of the wreck. Well, I don't like going home on my own in the dark. Oh, well, uh, I'll walk you home if you like. I thought you'd never have that. Oh, right. <laughs> have you? Have you really enjoyed yourself? <laughs> yeah, smashing. Have you? Oh, not half. Well, no trouble from your feet. Not a bark out of them. <laughs> I think we could do this more often, you know. There were lots of nice dancers over at Town Hall. What do you think? Why not? Oh. Well, I'll... I distinctly remember asking you to put it somewhere safe. Well, if I did, it'll be in there. And this is somewhere safe, is it? I could lose the entire Weatherfield Library in here. Remind me what it looks like. A buff, a plain buff folder like that. But that's not it. No, that is not it. That is probably my father's collection of used pipe cleaners or rusty paper clips or some such rubbish. Oh, it's you and your David's junior school reports. Oh my God, it's like a time capsule in here. You know, if the Martians landed and found only this, I'll bet you they could piece together the entire history of humanity. It explains those strange gurgly noises in the night, though. What does? It's not a poltergeist, it's this thing. Slowly digesting five generations of old Christmas card boxes of buttons and single gloves. Ken tends to get upset over trifles. <laughs> so yeah. what's changed? Look, Deirdre, I am late, and that folder does contain. Ah, oh, thanks for that. Yeah, I suppose it is a bit of a monstrosity, isn't it? Yeah, it's not exactly high tech. Oh, no, I wanted to get rid of it when we modernised. Yeah, how could we that? Uncle Albert, he really loved this horrible old thing. Mm, I know. Now it's stopping us now, though, is there? Are you serious? Well, it's a thought. I mean, just think of the space it'd make. <laughs> Can we, though? I mean, it's not attached to the foundations or anything, is it? Yeah, well, if it is, we'll move. <laughs> Shall we, then? Yeah. Right, done. I'll get on to an antique dealer this morning. <laughs> Wanting the one today, Mr. Clayton. Right, love. Well, just leave me, is he? What's that supposed to mean? Don't. Well, mind your own business then. And I'll be going back to one a day until further notice. Right, well, that's up to you then, love. All the same, minute. Put women in chairs, they can't leave well enough alone. I'm not swooping on you. She's not, Ernie. She's fancying us. Am I, because, uh, like, I don't fancy anybody at half past days on a day like today, love. Morning, Harry, love. Freezing, isn't it? Smile would make it better. Smile? I'm frozen stiff. If I smile, they'll put me away. Am I the only cheerful soul about this morning, or what? Of course you are, love. We're all working. You're just watching. Look, I'm only watching so I can get to know you better. And so you can get to know it's not Billy Walker anymore. And there's us thinking he'd had a sex change. I want to know who I'm dealing with. Not just faceless bobs turning up with crates and barrels. Just one big happy family caper, eh? That's right. And then, if there was ever any reason to complain... Here we go. Either from your side or from mine, we can have it out face to face instead of forever pestering the brewery. Like I said, Vinnie, snooping. And here's another honourable employee arriving for work bang on time. Morning, Hilda Love. Excuse me, lad. With pleasure. Fag break, Ernie. Aye, right, let's have a smoke. Hey, Hilda. I was trying to create a good impression there. That weren't very nice, were it, charging right past? Yes, well, I'm sick of being nice. Now, let me get on. What the blinking heck's wrong with you? What's it to you? What's it to anybody? I'll tell you what it is to me. I've got to spend the next couple of hours in your company, and if this is the way it's going to be, I'm not exactly relishing the prospect. And I'll tell you something else and all. I know you will, Gordon. The longer you keep something bottled up, the worse it'll be when it finally bursts out. So come on, out with it before I belt you. All right, if you must know. I must. Well, it's my lodger, Henry. He's gone, hasn't he? And all on account of them blooming busybodies over at Baldwin's. Just 
left his door key and gone. Well, the thing is, he wants something racy, and he wants us to come up with it, doesn't he? Well, who does he think we are, Saatchi and Saatchi? Yeah, but we could do it, Ken. Well, I could anyway. Yes, but why should we? Why? Because he'll be impressed and grateful, that's why. And so he'll probably advertise with us forever. Well, what's wrong with our standard layout? Because it's standard, that's what's wrong with it. What's wrong with doing something new now and again? You don't believe in trying anymore, do you? I don't believe in pandering to people's wishes. Look, if he wants a fancy layout of his own do-it-yourself shop, then surely he should do it himself. Typical. What are you looking for? Antique dealer. Oh, you're going to sell a sense of humour, are you? No. An old sideboard. Well, this is you all over, is this? What? You're looking through yellow pages when the man you want advertises with us. Look under Glen Knight. But this says, houses cleared. Yeah, I know he sounds like an old junk shop, doesn't he? But he is excellent, honestly, because he gave our mum 200 quid for our grand's tall boy. Oh, I'll go on then, on your recommendation. So, shall I tell you then how I plan to approach this layout? Or shall I? Well, if you're determined to do it, I suppose you're better. Well, basically, it's a pair of step ladders. Right, okay? And on each step, you list the steps towards becoming a fully equipped DIY freak. And then in the article, you give a detailed description of what's possible at each step. So step one, it's easy things like shelves. And then step ten is loft conversion and central heating. So it's visually more interesting. Hello, Mr Knight. Yes, yes, uh, I've got an old sideboard I'd like you to have a look at. It's Gambala, Weatherfield recorder. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, OK, any time. I'm sorry I had to miss it, I am that. Only a fancy car at Bingo. Hey, but you'll never guess what biggest subject of conversation is over there. Well, next to Nutty Blackleg, spouting his mouth off. It's you. You Can't what? Can't see my rate of cloth. Well, there's no wrong with that, is there? It's the heck is like. Dead light on your feet and all by oh. all accounts. Ultra Volta, that's what they're calling you. Who? You know, like Star of Corner Shop Fever. And lab. Half a pound of lab? No, like lab instead of grease. Hey? Oh, forget it. Right, I want one cheese and pickle, and one just cheese. Right. Hey, but we used to have a laugh, didn't we, in old days? You know, at dances. You know, lasses dancing with one another, big daft frocks on. <laughs> Lads swarming in at chucking out time, full of ale, shouting. Ah, hey, and all them fights on balcony. <sighs> Dead romantic. Right, thanks, Al. I think you'll find that's right. Oh, right. Bye. Full of ale and shouting, eh? As one dancing man to another, Councillor Roberts, what a sad misappreciation of the delights of dancing. To glide across a freshly waxed floor with an attractive woman all done up to nines. It's bliss. It's paradise. I'll have a jar of baby gherkin. It's just a project we set ourselves up. <laughs> we decided to track down everybody out of our old class at Greenbank. See what they made of themselves. See, we haven't worked at all since leaving. No. Oh, what a shame. They not at all. We reckon we're doing OK. Yeah. See some right horror stories, though. Remember Kathy Dwyer? Oh, God, yeah. Married, two kids. <laughs> I don't believe it. Hang on. Divorced and married again, with another on the way. All in three years. And look at you. What's wrong with me? Well, them's not exactly Pierre Cardin clothes, are they? That stuff on your face. It's not out of my makeup, is it? Hey guys, I'm a garage mechanic. Nah. We're very disappointed in you, Kev. You're opting for brain death. <laughs> Oi, handsome. Three more pints over here. <laughs> the world's your oyster, Kev. Like Frankie say. I mean, you can end up like this character here if you're not careful. Shuffling round a back street pub in your carpet slippers. <laughs> I'll be £2.31, lad. There's two quid. Keep the change. Hey, <laughs> leave it out, Scotty. I'm a regular here. There you go, Wolf, mate. Cheers, Ken. Wolf, mate? Hey, it's worse than we thought, Scotty. It is, Stu. It's brain death and excelsis. Yeah. Overgrown toddlers. Got you worried, have they? The only thing I'm worried about is going totally berserk, you know. I've been known to lose me rag and go for the jugular, me. Terrible sight to behold, apparently. Blind with rage, fists flailing. I hospitalised a bloke in Disbury one night. Is there much trouble around here, do you know? Every night. But with you to protect us, why should we worry? 
Sally, this is a surprise. Hello. Uh, give the lady a... Uh, Half a lager, please. Half a lager, please. And to what do we owe this honour? Not much. What's on your mind, eh? Scoop of the year. We don't have scoops in our office. We spend most of the time selling sideboards. Do I detect a hint of discontent? A mountain. <laughs> you see, the thing is, if I'm going to stay, I really want the recorder to take off. But most of the time, it's like dragging a steamroller uphill. I can. I mean, he's such a... Well, I, I don't know what you call it. Well, he's an intellectual, isn't he? He's too busy cogitating to get his finger out. I've been doing a bit of that myself, actually. There's a, a vacancy at the Gazette. You know, the money's not so good, but the prospects are. But I don't know. Go for it! What, just like that? Yeah, forget Barlow. Jump in with both feet. Here, I've just had an idea. You're going to see me put it into practice. Now, don't go away. Hang on there, Tim. Hello, Hello, boss. Oh, well, look what wind's blowing. Hey, you behave yourself, will you? Box up courage to show your face, and happy love. She only needs courage with a face like that, love. You are. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. I told Billy Walk where to get off. He got off. Oh, I did. Dead sharpish. <laughs> By heck, I've been jilted once or twice. But I've never had a fellow sell up and leave town before. Yes, ladies. Uh, can we have two hot pots, please? Sorry, loves. Betty, the hot pot queen, is still in bed with a tummy bug. However, we are sporting a large selection of buttered doorsteps made by my own fair hand. Mm. Oh, let's go down to the flying arse. It's well run there. You can go if you want to, Vera. I'll have a corned beef and tomato sandwich. One corned beef and tomato. Sixty. Oh, go on, make it. Make so. it. Mm. I'll tell you what, the romantic gone down in this full bed. Wonder why. Here, try this one. I think you'll find it's the right size. What's this then? A flying suit, designed for and made by Baldwin's of Weatherfield. Oh, how much is this then? For you, darling, compliments to the management. Your figure will be a walking advert. Just remember to tell everyone where you got it from, all right? I will, yeah. Hey, nice. did, you, did you clock that? I did. It's when I give her one free with them flying suits. I should be able to have that. Never give me one. Mm, I wonder why, Vera. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, come on then. Just doing well, a bit of ironing. I felt duty bound to come round and set your mind at rest about this lodger of yours having left you. Oh, well, your sympathy is very much appreciated, Mr. Sugden. Well, I'm not really here to give you sympathy. You're not? No. Deary Barlow says as how you're upset the scoundrel's left you. Well, I've come to tell you you're very lucky. Oh, I am, am I? Indeed you are. Now, you'd have never have had a moment's peace with a chap like that. The self, 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 old time is type. They're never happy unless they make another folk miserable. And that we're sorting off and letting folk down and, and putting them to shame. Get out. You what? I said get out. And as for who's shamed who, it's them I'm ashamed of, them factory girls. Oof, I always knew this neighbourhood weren't much, but I did pride myself it were neighbourly. <laughs> neighbourly? I'd stab a chap in the back as soon as look at him. It's them what's let me down, not Henry. Well, they can be impulsive, yes. You're just as bad, you know, coming round here calling him fit to burn and you don't even know him. Well, I know him, and I know a chap like Henry needs a bit of understanding. Well, we all need that, don't we? I mean, uh, I mean, well, I'd no idea. To think of a poor fellow like that wandering the streets this time of year, feeling the way he must feel. That's what's shameful. Oh, it is, it is. Well, you can rest assured, Mrs Ogden, I'll keep my eyes peeled. And you're not escape detection if he's in this area. I'll be back soon. Yeah. But Henry won't, will he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ken's uh, just coming in now, uh, BT. BT? Do you want a word? No, of course I don't. What, what shall I tell her? Uh, tell her I've rushed up to the bathroom, but I send my love. Hello, BT. He's just gone straight up to the bathroom, love, but he sends his love. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'll have to go now and get his dinner out or I'll be eating tablecloth. Yeah. I'll give you a ring when I know anything. Bye-bye. Oh, I hate it when you do that. What? Lumber means I'm making excuses for you. Oh, I'm sorry, love, but I've been on the phone all morning and I don't want BT Kenny Mary in the lunch hour now, do I? I'll get your dinner out. What time did she ring, anyway? About half past nine? No, I rang her, actually, about the sideboard. What on earth for? Well, I just got to thinking, if we are going to get rid of it, she ought to be offered first refusal. You did what? But I've got an antique dealer coming around to value it this afternoon. And he said we were thinking of getting rid. Yeah, well, what's it got to do with BT, anyway? Well, she's family, isn't she? 
Anyway, I rang her. And she refused it, of course. No. <laughs> That's absurd. She'd have to take the roof off her place to get that inside. She said if we weren't going to get rid of it, she'd give us 200 quid for it. 200 quid? Well, well, that's interesting. I wonder what Beatty knows that we don't. We're not just as well off. We're actually better off, Robbie. Of course we are. Work is for losers. Yeah, yeah we had enough of work at school, didn't we? <laughs> what do you do anyway? I work for the council, me. Grave digging. Well, no, I work on the bins, but well, that's just my daytime job. Mainly, I'm an astronomer. Sorry, UFO. That'd be the bins diving your crackers. Well, at least I pay me way. I don't see how you two manage. Really, I don't. Ah, uh, manna from heaven. Mingled with a bit of robin. Supermarkets, washing lines. Yeah, well, I'm off to work now. Yeah, right. Jobs work. And I'm off to the library. <laughs> library? Yeah, you see, I reckon if you don't use certain parts, they're liable to curl up and die. Now, your brain is the most perishable thing. So you might feel snug now, but sooner or later you're going to want things. And when you do, you'll be snookered because your brain will have uh, evaporated. <laughs> Thick, eh? Got enough? Just. Oi! Two more pints over there. Soon oh. find out, won't mm. we? Right then, goes two more minutes and that's it, right? Okay, we're well, right behind you, Mr. Mr. Baldwin, I wonder whether. Uh, I mean, you're a chap with his wits about him. Thank you, Percy. I wonder whether I might ask you a couple of questions about the mysterious disappearance of Henry Wakefield. I wonder at the time of your sacking him, eh, if he said anything about his intended whereabouts. Now, Mrs. Ogden's very upset and I'm sure you'll appreciate it. Upset? She should be. Trying to pass him off as a proper fellow. Don't you, Mr. Baldwin? Now, listen, Percy. Wherever he is has got nothing whatsoever to do with me. And for your information, Henry decided to leave because of all the fuss. OK? Enough said. Very civil, I must say. Hilda's still seething, is she? That's putting it mildly. She's like an unexploded bomb. Oh, hello. Is, um, is that the Gazette? Yes, I'm phoning about the um, trainee vacancy. Mm. Oh, when will he be back? Three-ish. Um, yes, my name's Sally Waterman. Mr. Bretton knows me actually. Um, look, it's better if you don't call back, I'll call later. Secret assignations, eh? Clandestine trysts. Um, no. It was just one of those answer phones, as a matter of fact. I hate leaving messages, don't you? But I don't know. Sometimes it's a relief to be able to say what you want without being interrupted. <laughs> What's this? Uh, the finished DIY spread. My, my. That was quick. Yes, well, I'm not selling sideboards, am I? Or anything pressing like that. Yes, well, that looks fairly presentable. We'll have to OK it with a client, of course. You've not noticed my new flying suit, have you? Oh, yes. Off to the moon, are you? Yes, thinking about it. Mike Bolden gave it to me. Did he? Not like him to go giving things away. No. He said I'd be good advertising. It's nice of him, wasn't it? All right, well, let's tackle this pensioner's ball feature, shall we? Why not? What? Forget it. Your problems demand. I mean, I should quite rightly point out, it is a very nice piece. But then nowadays folk are not interested in good things. I mean, they bring their nice stuff to me and they ask me to strip it. Now, folk nowadays, they want rubbish. They want horrible featureless shelving units and racks. And they'll pay a fortune for them. But your only customer for a piece like this would be your connoisseur. And, well, it'd have to be in absolutely tip-top condition even to interest one of them. And it's not. Well, you've, you've got a floor joint there. There's a lot of surface scratching. And there's even a hint of worm. I'll tell you what, though. Out of fullness for period, I'll give you hundred quid for it. Well, thanks very much for coming anyway. Hey, I'll sell it to one or two other chaps. Here's no, your coat. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. There's uh, no need to be jumping gun now, is there? Uh, these others, um, they've made you good offers, have they? Well, they've bettered yours by a long way. So, I've got a bit of competition, have I? I'll tell you what. I'll bet 350 quid will put catamount pigeons, won't it? Well, 400 might. 400, then. Well, I reckon we'll both do all right out at 400. And uh, what about the flawed joint and the worm? Oh. <laughs> I mean, we've all got to have those tactics now, haven't we? Shooting stars never stop, even when they reach the top. Shooting stars never stop. Clean them a minute, Will, and clear them to our will. Fine. Here comes a supernova right on my shoulder. I'll be doing the boots in the back. Here comes a supernova right on my shoulder. Come on, lads. Skate's on, it's quarter past three. Yeah, all right. 
We're going, we're going. Careful! Go on. Sorry, mate. Go on. Bear off. The bear you. Hey, Stu. What? Money from heaven, isn't it? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, shall we? Yeah, let's. Come on, open up! What's the racket? Oh, canned up, weren't they? And they smashed a glass when they stood up. Oh, never mind. It's worth the price of a couple of pots to be shut of them. Oh, no, they swipes for males and all. They what? I never thought boys were so faddy. The only thing they both like is bacon, and I can't give them that every day. It's so high in cholesterol. Well, I envy your problem. I've only got myself to suit. Uh, can I have four fish fingers and a small tin of peas while she's thinking? Oh, well, there's no news of Henry yet, then. No, is the wreck. Well, he's bound to come to light sooner or later. Yeah, floating in the canal, perhaps. Mrs. Ogden, progress report. Uh, subject's whereabouts is yet still a mystery. However, we do now know one thing for certain. What's that? Nobody around here knows out about him. That's a fat lot of good, isn't it? Well, it's all we didn't know this morning. I wish you'd all stop pretending. Does none of you care whether he's alive or dead? She's taking it very badly, aren't she? She's getting worse than all. Just can't help some fault. 14p this bad cost me. 400 pounds? Twisted him round my little finger, I Unbelievable! 400 <laughs> snackers! <laughs> oh. Hey, there's only one snag, though. What's that? What about Beatty? Well, what about Beatty? Well, we sort of offered her first refusal. Oh, she's been out bed, hasn't she? Yeah, I know, but it's all thanks to her, in a way. I mean, I'd never have had the cheek to go for more if she hadn't offered 200 in the first place. Ah, oh, we'll handle it somehow. Well, it's difficult, though, isn't it? I'll tell you what's even more difficult. What? Trying to think what on earth we're going to put in its place. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm sick of bacon. <laughs> hey, thanks a bundle, Kevin. A right pair of tear away your lumber with, weren't they? No, they weren't. They were just trying to cope with being unemployed. No, they didn't want to work. They said so. Never mind all that. I'm talking about factors. They swiped some ales off bar and they smashed a glass on the floor. Oh. What? From right under your nose? No, behind me back. And if you see him again, don't just steer well clear or else. Or else what, Will? Uh, just or else. Okay. Well, I'd like to see him again. I really would. The sooner the better. Have you found his scab yet, Hilda? Hilda's lost a scab, haven't you, love? Can I have a light to entertain him, please? I think that's right. Hey, I'll tell you what you should have done, Hilda. You should have rolled his trouser leg up before you let him have that room. They don't know, they were a black leg. <laughs> you must be thick. Hey, Hilda, come on. Have a drink, with us. We'll put you up. You'll put me up? After you've ruined everything? You'll keep out of my way, that's what you'll do. I've done with a lot of you. Playing about with folks' futures without a second thought. You've lost that lad his job, his home and his self-respect, you know that? Well, who were about and weren't he? He was trying to make a new start, wasn't he? Has he to regret his mistake for the rest of his life? Can't he be given a second chance? Oh, no. No, not round here, he can't. You've denied that lad a new start. For good and all, I dare say. Because he took a lot of persuading to try. Yes, I persuaded him. Then I had to go and put him in with you lot. <laughs> You've denied me my new start and all, I have to stand. Because I was really enjoying having somebody to do for again. Really felt I was starting to cope. That's all over now, isn't it? Finished. Oh, yes. Well, go on. You can carry on making your jokes now. Take a packet of them chocolate wheat meal while I'm here. Oh, go well with a cup of tea, then. Right, that's, uh... Can you put it on the rover's bill? Well, I... Only if you didn't give me any money. Ah, all right, then. You're not doing up, then, yourself? Oh, no, I wouldn't perks a job, innit? Cup of jar and biscuit. Wouldn't deny me, that wouldn't bet. Anyway, you're looking after her, are you? I tried to when she was here, you know, but it's uh, very difficult. But I tried. Bit of handful, isn't she? Yeah. yeah, I'm keeping my eye on her. A couple of yobos tried to come in yesterday, didn't they? It's a good job I was there, actually. You're a uh, young lady not in, then? No, not yet. And I was late up this morning and missed my breakfast. Tell you what, if you see her when you're passing, just tell her that I'm, I'm starving, will you? Right. Shall I give her a knock? No, no, I don't want her to think I'm breathing down her neck. Okay. Good morning, love. Where was it? Stuck behind one of the drawers. Look at the date. May the 24th, 1919. Hey. That's where we'll go for our new sideboard. Look at that polished walnut bedroom suite. £33, 15 shillings. Best quality men's shirts, nine and six. Ladies' Panama hats, six and eleven. I could do with one of them. Plus a change. I shouldn't be at all surprised. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Look at that. 
Miners Federation seek nationalisation of pits. Owner's attitude condemned. Yeah, yeah, I'll be getting condemned and all if I don't get a move on. Ah, that's why he kept it. 200 officers and men of the 1st Battalion, the Lancashire Fusiliers, returned to their depot at Wellington Barracks Berry yesterday after service in the Army of Occupation. Amongst them were... Da, 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 and Lance Corporal Albert Tatlock, aged 23, of Number 1 Coronation Street, Weatherfield who was awarded the Military Medal for his bravery in saving the lives of two comrades under heavy fire during the assault on Fleur Cursolet. Uncle Albert, 23. Hey, don't forget you've got work to go to. Yeah. Are you a doctor in your spare time or something? You are. I'm oh, blood if I can read your writing, I think you must be. I'll give it here, what are you grousing at? Well, it's plain as nose on your face, lot for ham. That says ham. Well, of course it does, what do you think it says? <laughs> I don't know, it could say out. Anyway, what time do you want them? Twelve, well, say five, twelve. Call me for eleven fifty-five. Hi, Al. Sorry I'm late. I should think so, and all. I've not had my breakfast yet. Well, you go and get it then, I'll look after it. No, either. you're all right, love. Go stick kettle on, though, we'll have a brew. Right. Hey, I'll tell you what, put us a large slice down as well. I'll pick them up with ham cakes. Oh. oh. Oh, what's up with you? You look like some cat strag then. Thank you. Here's my order, Ralph. I'll pick it up later right. tonight, don't you? Bye, eh? You look rough. Don't crack. You needs friends. Don't you want to put your tuppers within and all? I'm saying nothing. You must know, I've been tossing and turning all that. I couldn't get over what Hilda said about Henry. Oh, you haven't been wearing your head about him, have you? He's missing, dear. How could have happened to him? Well, it's only what he deserves, isn't it? He should have thought about folk he'll working with instead of blacklegging. I'll tell you what, I've no sympathy for folk like that. If it happened again tomorrow, I'd do the same thing. Get rid. It weren't as simple as that, was it? His mother were ill. Oh, they all have some daft tale, don't they? I mean, it's a place of parks, daft. If we don't stick together, we're finished. Why do you think the start of these trade unions? I asked myself that, Vera, because if that's what we've got to do to stick together, well, God help us. One word and I'm out on strike. Yeah, good. While you're out, put kettle on. Yes, sir. He was hounded. There's no other word for it. He was hounded from the last place he lived in. And he's been hounded from here. Oh, I could murder that lot across the road. So I've always said, Hilda, the worst enemy of the working man is the working man. There's no room for what you call individuality these days. It's follow me or on your bike. I can't be doing with it. You're not your own boss around here, though, are you? Well, no, not exactly, but... Uh... What's that mean? Well, there's room to move about here, isn't there? Make your own little corner. Go on, you know what I mean. There's a brew ready when you are. Ah, that's what I call a boss, Hilda. Thanks, Bet. Be with you in a minute. Where did them chocolate biscuits come from? I got them when I went for the tea. Oh, thanks a lot. Morning. Has that lodger you fellow yours turned up yet? No, no sign of him. Well, I'm on my way to town hall now. I passed Salvation Army, so I'll call in and see if they can do out. Oh, that's very good of you. Not at all, no. I mean, if we can't help each other out, it's a poor do. That right, Squire? Definitely. Do unto others before they do it unto you. I'll let you know. Aye, oh, thank you. He's quite a nice fellow, really. Aye. Bit of a mug, but he's harmless. The sea's going down. Oh, can't be doing with that, can we, Hilda? Oh, yeah. Ladies' Panama hat, six and eleven. I wish you'd brought the whole newspaper in instead of telling it me in bits, and then I could have done a feature on it called The Changing Face of Weatherfield. Well, it's made about Manchester. There's only bits and pieces about Weatherfield. Anyway, that's my sort of copy, is it? That's more the thing the Gazette would do. Mm, maybe you're right. Back to the grind. <coughs> How you doing? Well, I'd be happier doing a feature for a dress shop. I mean, DIY is not really my scene, is it? So... How are we doing with the space? Most of it's sold. But I could do with a couple more ads, so I've been on to the people who put his aluminium windows in. And they're thinking about it. I must remember to ask him. He's coming in this morning, isn't he, Mr. Priest? Any minute. I must ask him who put in his security system. Because I know he's got one, then I can get on to them. What's it like, his new showroom? Oh, it's big. I mean, he wasn't there, so I only had a little nosy round, but he spent quite a bit of money on it. Come in! Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> hello. We're just talking about you. I thought my ears were burning. <laughs> Take a seat. Cheers. This is Sally Waterman who's looking after your feature, Mr. Priestley. So you're the gentleman who's been causing me all the trouble. Oh, okay, I hope not. No, it's going quite well, actually. 
Just one or two bits and pieces need jiggling about a bit. Mm. This is it. These will be the ads around here. People are putting your heating and did your lighting, your decorating, that sort of thing. Shouldn't be having adverts like that, should I? Why not? Well, opening a do-it-yourself shop. I should have done it all myself. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. What are these bits and pieces you're on about? Well, I think our readers will want to uh, see how your prices measure up. Very competitive, I can tell you. They'll not get a better bargain round here. Let's tell them, then. Oh, yeah. Um, can you let me have a list of your samples and uh, a list of your hiring charges? You do do a hiring service, don't you? Yeah, the big stuff. Right. I'll put a few prices down on paper and I'll drop them round this afternoon. That all right? Yes. Before I forget, who put in your security system? Because uh, I want to see about an ad. Norman's on Bolton Road. I've got the number somewhere. Oh, that's no, all right. I'll look at it. Efficient young lady you've got here. Yeah, she makes a good cup of coffee too. Do you fancy one? I wouldn't say no. <laughs> hmm. Cause a little setup. How do you like your coffee? Yes? Could I have a word, Elder? What about? Well, do you mind if I come in a minute? Oh, I, I, I've not come in the middle of your dinner, have I? No, no, I've finished. Oh, I, uh, I don't bother with much these days. No, I'm the same. I, uh, I just wanted to say how sorry I was, you know, about what's happened to Henry. Well, it's a bit late to worry about him, isn't it? If it hadn't been for you lot over there... Yes, I know. I spent half that night worrying about it. I mean, I, I wasn't one of them that insisted on him going, Elder. But, I mean, I could have done more to stop it. In fact, I should have done more. So, well, if it means anything, I, I should be confessing to Father Dunn and asking for the Lord's forgiveness. But, more important, I'd like yours as well, Elder. I just hope to goodness he's all right. Oh, he will be. He will be, because he deserves to be, don't he? I mean, he's a nice little fella. Yeah. Look, um, I've got a drop of sherry left over from the funeral. Do you fancy one? Oh, I, mean, I could do with some of Oh, yes, I'd love one, please. Oh, no. Right. I I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll drink to Henry coming back, shall we? Yeah. All over by the reckoning, eh? It uh, was 400, wasn't it? That's right. Then 400, it is. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. Leave a bit of it all, don't we? They do indeed. Mind you, you know, pieces of furniture like that, they were built for more gracious surroundings than these, you know. French windows to the lawn, polished wooden floors. Still, no doubt I shall find a good home for it. Bramall Hall, perhaps. <laughs> No, hardly that good. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I don't suppose there's anything else of uh, interest, is there? No, no, nothing. No, there was the china, of course, but that's gone. Uh, china? Yeah, little figures, shepherdesses and things. There were dozens of them. Uncle Albert used to keep them wrapped up in newspaper in bottom at wardrobe. In their donkey's years. German, they were. he gave give them some fancy name or other. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, they were filthy dirty and they weren't worth anything. Oh, you never know. No, they were only worth a few quid, the man said. Uh, what, what man was that? The man I sold them to. He has a junk shop round here somewhere. I suppose uh, they've all gone, have they? Yes, I was glad to get rid of them. I'm sure you were. Well, it's uh, nice to have done business with you, Mr Barlow. And uh, Mrs Barlow. I'll see you out. Thank you. <laughs> what was all that rubbish, shepherdesses? Well, snobby devil. Meant for more gracious surroundings than these. And I don't like people who call my little house. Let him think he's Miss Summit. My goodness, you're an implacable enemy. I know. And I don't even know what it means. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you, you might be right. Well, you must admit they're ungodly hours, aren't they, eh? I mind you, when I was cooking in the army, I often had my sleeves rolled up at four o'clock in the morning. You wouldn't catch me playing them games in Civvy Street. Oh, it suits me. I mean, there's not like it, watching the dawn break and getting your lungs full of good clean air, you know. What round are you? No, out in country, I could understand it, Cheshire way. What, up none all them garden paths? Not likely. Give me streaks like this, I can drop my bottles on the doorstep without getting out of my cab. Ah, well, I'll be seeing you. I'll see you tonight. Ten out. Oh, and 
and Mr. Morgan rang up from Bowles and Johnson. He's seen one of our flying suits somewhere. Oh, that'd be Bateman. Great mates, Houston. Oh, well, he's seen one, and he wants six dozen in blue. Six dozen? Is that worth it? Oh, I think so. He's very interested. They're a big firm. All right, go on then. All together, it's quite a rosy picture. Think it'll run to another drink. Oh, I think so. <laughs> What? Get yourself to a proper game, lads. Thanks all around, OK? Them's the two I was telling you about. The two that swiped the ales and broke the glass. Oh, them are the two little gentlemen, are they? How nice to see them back. Are you sure you don't mind? No, no, as long as you don't take all afternoon. No, I'm only looking. What are you looking for, anyway? A sideboard? No, one of these... Wall fitment things, you know, like an English Welsh dresser. Oh, you're bound for a nasty shop that costs a lot of money, then, you know. Don't tell me. Hey, listen, you can read Ivory's writing. What would you say that said? Sponge mix. Well, why do I think it says salt flakes? Uh, it could be. It's not, though. Sponge mix. Mm. Tra. They're all the same around here. Right, I'll go and pick my suit up. I've got a gig over in Fieldsworth tonight. Your wife was telling me you play in a dance band. Yeah, I give a blow on the old sludge pump, you know. <laughs> Who'd you play with exactly? Everybody will have me. Mainly Greg Gordon and the Blue Tones. Oh! You ever heard of him? No. You're not in your door, I don't think anybody else has either. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, Three pound and eightpence. <laughs> nice new note. Only best from Social Security, love. I can see. Oh! You sure changing me. No, not really, love. You took them bottles yesterday and you broke them glasses. I'm sure you meant to pay for them, it just slipped your mind. I think you'll find it's right. Do you want me to come over this counter to you? I wouldn't dream of putting you to all that trouble, love. I'll come round to you. Out! 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 Now. Let's see if all them karate lessons were worth the money. I'm warning you. Try that game, you'll come off worse. Come on, love. You know, you can keep your lousy pump. <laughs> you know, that was very impressive. Have you really had karate lessons? Oh, I wish you'd try some at my, then you could find out. <laughs> right, lads. Four pints on the bar, paid for one sup in, you're in love. <laughs> yes, well, uh, come on in. Well, I've got good news and bad, Mrs Ogden. Uh, I drew a blanket Salvation Army, I'm sorry to say, but I saw something very interesting on my way back. Now, you know the chapel yard, uh, you know the back ginnel down by the Primworks? Yeah. Well, I always come back that way when I've been to town hall, and I'll tell you for why. Kids being what they are today, the widest berth I can give to that Bessie Street School, the better. Because they're not above chucking paving stones at you, some of them kids. Yes, well, what did you say? Well, I'm coming to that. I worked my way around Agnew Street, you see, over the spur ground, into Chapel Yard, and down back in, and there it is. Chain to a drain pipe. And Miss Bike. Are you sure? Well, red frame, straight handlebars, three speed gears, that's it, isn't it? Sounds like it, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, just to make sure. Now, I'll nip home, get myself a bite of dinner, then I'll come back and take you, right? Right. Move in the right direction, this Mrs. Ogden. It's what they call a breakthrough. Yeah. Amazing. Different world, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, what, over 65 years ago, isn't it? Charlie's on the Prince's Theatre. Where's the Prince's Theatre? Where was the Prince's Theatre? It was on Oxford Street, where that news theatre used to be. Oh, I didn't know there was a theatre there. Yeah, about half a dozen in those days. The Palace, the Princess, the Opera House, Theatre Royal. Gaiety. You really are much too old for me, aren't you? Absolutely. Come in. Oh, Hi. hello. I brought those prices along. Put in a few opening bargains, you know, as a bit of a come on. It's great. You haven't got a sideboard going half price, have you, by any chance? I've just got rid of an antique monstrosity looking for something to put in its place. I can supply you with the units. Cocktail cabinet, bureau, bookshelves. Make up your own design. Oh, you mean do it yourself? Like falling off a log. All you need is a power drill and a screwdriver. I'll stock three good lines. Take your pick. Tell you what I'll do. I'll let you have the units at trade, 
and I'll lend you all the tools you need. Take you a couple of nights to put up, if that. It's not how long it takes to put up, it's how long before it falls down. Get away with your bother, you'll eat it. Those prices all right, love? Yeah, they're fine. I'll let you look at it when it's finished. Right. Psst. Work on it. Yeah, I will. Shut up. Shut up. Right, bye-bye. Bye. Save you a lot of money, you know. Yeah, we have heard that before. Oh, how's bells, dear? He'll kill me. Right, I'll see you uh, about half past two, then. Yeah. Here's to you, Stu. And you, Scotty. Cheers. Come on, nice bit of chucking out, that bit. Should take it up professionally. Just watch you, you two. <laughs> they asked for it, them two. Aye, and they got it and all. Yeah, you surprised me a bit, I don't mind telling you. I was all ready to go round that bar myself, you beat me to it. Mind you, I'd have stepped in if needed, which I wasn't. Nice to know you were behind me, Will. You don't get this sort of carry-on at the Midland Cocktail Bar, do you? You don't pay these sort of prices, either. True! How <laughs> very true! Oh, uh, Mr. Bowen. Yeah? I don't think you've heard or not, but, uh, well, Henry's still missing. Who? Henry, Hilda's lodger. I'm just saying, well, we think it's a shame that you had to sack it. Yeah, that one were a bit hard. You couple of hypocrites. He come busting in my office, screaming blackmail, saying I've got to strike on my hands if I don't get rid of him. Then you have the flaming nerve to turn around and say some pity I had to sack him. Get out of my way, you two. You're sick of me. Oh. Well, I'm blown. What's the matter? It's gone. It worry you changed to this drain pipe. Somebody's pinched it. No, they can't have. It had a combination lock on that padlock and a good strong chain. No, no, it couldn't, it couldn't have used force. It's been undone proper as that. He's been back. Well, what did he want to leave it here for in the first place? Well, what did he have with him when he opted it? Oh, he'd have had uh, a big suitcase and some books and the bike. Well, there you are. There's quite a load, is that, you know? Now, for my money, he's struggled this far, couldn't struggle any further, so he's locked up his bike and then he's gone on to where he wanted to go. And he's come back for his bike. Blow me if you haven't just missed him. Oh, trust you. You knew I was going into town. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, love. I got held up now. Just sit down for well, a minute. Well, I haven't got time now, have I? Alf's only given me an extra hour off. I've wasted half of his. Is it is? Look, your dinner's in the office. Sit open. down. I want to talk to you. And that's another thing. Beatty's been on the phone. If you'd been home on time, you'd have been on the bus and you could have dealt with it. What her. does she want? Well, what do you think she wanted? She wants to know how much we got for the sideboard. Did you tell her? Yeah. Well, told her we got 200 for it and I'd sent her off. I had to think fast. Couldn't have done better myself. Oh, wonders never cease. I've done something right for a change. I'll send her a cheque tonight, but for Pete's sake, let's remember what we said, or we're in trouble right now to more important things. Ken! No, I'm saving you the journey. It's all fixed. How would you like a wall fitman, drink cabinet, bureau and cupboards? I'd like it very much. Which bank are we going to rob? No, no bank. Getting it all at trade. Chapel advertises with us. How big? Big as you like. Cover the whole wall if you want. I'm going to get in pieces, putting it up myself. You? All right, infidel, we'll put it up. All we need to do is decorate the wall and then we fix the fitment. Now, all I need is a power drill and a screwdriver. Now, heaven help me if I can't manage that. It'll look great. Well, couldn't look any worse. And that's all I needed, a word of encouragement. Don't take it so much to heart. Oh, I can't help it. You didn't know him the way I did. I was a different man when he stood up at that dance and said... No, he poured his heart out to me, poor lad. Nearly finished him off the first time it happened to him. But when it happened again... Well, he could have... He could be... Now, look. I know what you're thinking, and I'm not one for mincing words. Now, if he'd have wanted to do away with himself, ask yourself, would he have come back for his bike? Oh, they do some funny things when they're in that state. Now, look, if that had been his intentions, he'd have walked out of that community centre after his outburst, he'd have walked down Fido Street to Canal and jumped in. But he didn't. He came back here and packed his things. Are you listening to me? I'm an hoodoo. That's what I am, a hoodoo. Something always happens to people I'm fond of. There's our Irma, she's had a rotten life. And my brother Archie. Then Stan, and now... Oh, I reckon it's me as one's put him down. Hey, shouldn't you be going?
going to work? Yeah, I just thought I'd finish this off there. Peculiarly satisfying stripping our wallpaper. What, I just hope you're as keen on getting some new stuff up. Yeah, well, one of the advantages of living in a shoebox is it doesn't take a lot of doing. Says you. You know, a lot of people get the stuff they're going to put up before they take the old stuff down. We'll get it this afternoon. By the time Sandy Gall knocks off, it'll look like something out of Homes and Garden. We could live in a shed and say that. No faith, no faith. Speaking of which, there's a chapel that's in Coalport Street has extended this kitchen into the backyard with a glazed roof and grows a vine in it. He makes wine with his own grapes in Weatherfield. Ken, all I want is wallpaper. Yeah, well, our backyard doesn't get the sun. We've got to live on the southern slopes in Weatherfield. Oh, doesn't the room look bigger without that monstrosity, though? Very desirable, late Edwardian Rococo sideboard. Monstrosity. There's room to breathe now. Anyway, it seems all right. I think the wall should be uh, strong enough to take it all. Ken. I think you ought to get a bloke in before you reduce the house to a pile of rubble. I mean, you're good at the brainy stuff. Look, I know the English have this ingrained belief that you can either read a book or you can lay bricks. It is perfectly possible to do both. OK, genius. I'll just have to make sure I've got a supply of elastoplast in. It's a present for you. Happy birthday. Oh, Mavis. Shaving soap. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> It's a scented candle. You light it and it's supposed to fill the room with a sort of jasmine smell. Well, it's smashing. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Well, happy birthday, anyway. Ooh. Your birthday, is it? Not telling you which one. Oh, we're not all then. If you get to my time of life, you start getting a bit cocky about them. Many happy turns, any old. Thank you. See what your horoscope says. It's a load of twaddle, is that? I'll have my cage and every please, and a pack of the mental pastels. Hi, see, here we are. The poetic side of your nature is strongly aspected, but things seem to happen without rhyme or reason. Money matters need attention. Don't they always? <laughs> <laughs> and today's birthday. Things are looking up, but they wear a rival at work. Oh! What's yours? <laughs> Mine's be on your toes and deal with practical matters. Take your best suit to the dry cleaners. You may be needing it. Yeah. Now, you're interested in astronomy. What do you think of this stuff? It's got nothing to do with astronomy. It's just a way of filling up the paper. Probably about as much as true as anything else in it. Oh, can I have a quarter of Everton mint, please? Hey, did you find out what happened to, uh, what's his name? The barmy fella? No. Well, he wasn't barmy, just a bit funny. Mind you, no more funny than me or you, though. I'm saying now. Well, he used to go to the library and read a book around here. They reckon that's a sure sign. What library is this? The big one in town. I go there myself of an afternoon. I've seen him there more than once with all the other barn pots. Oh, it's full of loonies reading. Back again. Mr. Priestley, nice to see you. Cup of coffee? Uh, no, Tom, I was just dropping by. Only the young lady said she would show me what the thing was going to look like before you put it in the paper, you know. Oh, did we, did she, Sally? I've just pasted it up. Don't worry if it looks a bit rough, it won't on the page. Oh, aye, that looks grand. Uh, only I can't see the name of the shop anywhere. No, no, that goes here, right across the top, you see. But that's all in red, so it's not shown here. It's like this. Oh, right, that goes there. Grand as out. Um, you haven't a bit of space left to put something else in, have you? What was that? Well, I've just acquired a load of compost and peat, that sort of stuff. Just wanted to see how it goes, you know, the gardening gear. Well, I think this looks just about right as it is. Well, what about here? You've left space. No, no, that's for the editorial copy. The what? The deathless prose, Mr Priestley. The article I told you I'm going to do, it starts there. Oh, I don't know. Right. Have you written out yet? Well, you could say I'm doing the research. Do it yourself, worm's eye view. It'll be the nature of dispatches from the front. You're doing them wall units then? Well, my wife's been down on her knees, pleading me in tears not to do it, but... Um, Why's that? She thinks I'll demolish the house. It's a doddle, it is. Amazing. That's the idea. Well, if you want me advice, you know where to find me. Any tackle you need, I'll do it for you at cost price. I'll be along. ta ra ta ra I take it this article is going to be our comic cuts department. You too. What is it about me? I mean, why do women think I'm incapable of hitting a hammer with a nail? What is wrong with these hands? I mean, what's wrong with them? I know a fellow with hands like that. And he can play the piano. Can you play the piano? Hey, Jack. Yeah. Can I ask a favour? As long as it don't cost me no time. Tile off. I'd like to borrow your long ladder sometime. Get in my garage roof. Ladders. You won't like to buy them, will you? Cart and all. No, just a lend. 
What a pity. If he gives us a sharp off, he could have the old flaming round. Just look at my fingers and I'll never play the violin again. Oh, hey, Jack, they look like wax. Have you got bad circulation in your fingers? I've got no circulation in my fingers. Are you moaning again? Yes, and I'm quite entitled. You try going up and down that ladder cleaning windows in this flaming weather. Just look at them. Peel them. Go on. Oh, flipping it, Jack. Oh, that's lovely. Do you know how Eskimo women get their hubby's hands warm when they come back from uh, the polar bear hunt, eh? Very devoted Eskimo women, you know. Well, fetch us a polar bear back, Chuck, and we'll see how we go on. Oh, aye. Don't think I can't see you making up to the landlady. Ah, well, his finger fella can't get at home like sympathy. Just look at them. Do you know why they can't get proper AC in that betting shop? I'll never know. Well, if you want a job where you've got to keep warm, Jack, I mean, there's one going across road, isn't there, Vera? Oh, ah, there is isn't that black leg that's left. Why don't you put in for it, Jack? Hey, that'd be handy. Working where I could keep my eye on you. <laughs> Too late, Brian, lad. I have just been taught into keeping my ladders. Very bracing. <laughs> have you heard uh, anything of Henry at all? No. No, nothing. Not a word from him. I just hope he's all right, wherever he is. Oh, there's plenty of places you could go to. Yeah, but I can't help thinking the state he must have been in. There you go again, thinking all the worst things that could possibly have happened. Yeah, well, the way he's been treated. Well, he didn't jump in canal. I've told you to not come back for his bike. Mm, there's folk round here wouldn't care if he had jumped in the canal. No, they see somebody brought down to what they think's lower than them, and they glory in it. Oh, they do, and I could name names. I think there's a lot feel pretty bad about it. Yeah, well, there's one or two said as much. According to them, they never went along with it. But they did, and they know it. Blooming hypocrites. Well, I'm going to say something, and I hope you won't take it amiss. I've been surprised by you. I have. I never thought you were the Good Samaritan. I'm not saying I am. No, I am. And I think the more highly of you for it. Oh. Well, I hope you won't take this amiss, neither. I don't care what people think about me. Ooh, if I bothered myself about that, I'd go round the twist. But I am bothered about Henry, and I'll not rest till I find out what's become of him. Well, uh, here's a thought now. You used to spend a lot of time in the library, didn't you? The big library in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to go there in the day when we thought he was out at work. Well, as far as we know, he's not working now, is he? Now, I wonder why I never thought of that. Now, there's a place to have a scout around. You see, it's a question of using the old noddle. It's like hunting, you know. Thinking the way the quarry thinks. Yeah. Only... Well, I'm not sure about the big library. I mean, I don't think you can just go in. Of course you can, he does. You probably have to join. It's a public library. Anybody can go in. Have you ever been in there? I can't rightly say I have. No, but I've had no call to. But it's a race, isn't it? You've as much right as anybody. Anyway, it was just an idea. I wonder when it'd be a likely time. <sighs> when it's raining cats and dogs, I shouldn't wonder. Or cold, like it is today. I mean, that'd be his refuge, wouldn't it? Keeping warm on rates. There we are. Wild flipping extravagance, but all the same. Mm. One pound twenty. Mm. Still, uh, I like looking at those as well. All those beautiful houses and gardens that people have got. Well, don't laugh, but I thought there might be something in it to give Ken some ideas. There's magazines that specialise in that. Wonder we don't stop it. No, I mean for the house. Oh, and have you got any do-it-yourself magazines as well? He's suddenly taken it into his head. Oh, come in on Thursday. I'll save you one. Yes. Sir. I think there's one coming out, you know, building up like an encyclopedia week by week. There's a lot of those, aren't there? Oh, aye. Uh... What was the name? That woman that had the garden in one. What woman? Oh, you know, it went on for years, building up and up, and she had every single one. And she lived in Maudsley Street. I mean, all she got was a hanging basket over a front door. Oh, uh, yeah. I asked her once, you know, what was the point with her having no garden? And do you know what she said? No. Well, she said that she imagined it all, you know, what she planted and where and, and what it went with and, and what she had to do every month, like pruning and cutting back and mulching, what they do. She even wrote into gardeners question time asking them about deadheading peonies and they answered her. And she hadn't got any peonies. <laughs> Still, I can understand the pleasure, really. Well, you would, seeing you as daft as what she is. <laughs> <laughs> Register oh. letter, love. Oh. Uh, you, maybe. Oh, registered. Just give us your autograph. It's oh. yes, all right. Hey, you don't for yourself now. It's probably a summer. <laughs> <laughs> I think, thank you. Well, come on. 
Marlow? No, who's writing the registered letter? Might be the pools, maybe. No, I don't do the pools. Oh, no, I have... Oh, it's not the pools. It's a competition. I've won a competition. Oh, oh I've gone in for hundreds. Oh. Come oh, on. Well, I, it's a mistake, actually. I, I haven't really won it. Come here, let's see. Yes, you have. It says, it's from Allied Publications, and it said, we are pleased to inform you that you have won. Oh, me. For what she won. Rita, will you please give that back to me? I mean, the one time I win, and... She has won a second honeymoon by courtesy of Modern Bride magazine. Oh, Mavis, well done. Well, I, I went in for it when... Oh, when, when don't I... look like that. You won the second honeymoon. The fact you've never even been on your first is neither of them. Oh, don't be so stupid, Rita. How can I go on a second honeymoon with no husband? <laughs> I did, didn't I? If you're too busy. No, 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 no. Sally, can I leave you standing on the burning deck? I'll manage. I've got to go and choose wallpaper. Oh, you're delight. Guess who's won a second honeymoon? Won a second honeymoon? Yeah, in a competition. Guess who's won? Uh, Vera Duckworth. She's got a second honeymoon like a shot. Don't think she'd take Jack with her, though. <laughs> no. Well, tell us. Make a good story for the paper, this. Oh, no, you can't put this in. I wouldn't tell you if I thought that. Why? Who is it? I promise you won't put it in. All right, we won't put it in. Mavis. Mavis? You're joking. Mavis. It's good, though, isn't it? What's so funny about this Mavis? Uh, well, that's uh, quite a long story. Yeah, the point is, she hasn't had the first honeymoon yet. Oh, are you kidding? Yes, in case of this fella, come the wedding day, everybody turned up, bar the bride and groom. They had simultaneous cold feet. Oh, her, no. Oh, Ken, that's wonderful. It's priceless, isn't it? I was in the cabin when she got the letter. Ken, I know you promised, but that's just too good to leave. All the same, we're not using it. You can't mean it. The bride that never was wins second honeymoon. Now, that's a gift. If she's a friend, she'll be excruciatingly embarrassed. No. Oh. Look, just you finish your article on pot plants and then chase up that florist for their coffee. No proper paper would turn that down. I don't kid myself, this is Fleet Street. And if it were, I wouldn't be the first editor to keep a friend's name out of the paper. Ah, the left. Builder Ogden without a curl is in. She must have a fancy man. Oh, perhaps she's worth looking for one. If you must know, I'm looking for the man that told you like what he thought of you. Just want to let him know he's not alone in his opinion. Are you talking about Henry? Mm. Why are you going looking for him? Myself, I won't bother. Oh, now, come on, Vera. You don't wish him any harm. Look, thought well, they shut of him, didn't they? And they got shut of him. As far as I'm concerned, that's it. Do you know, sometimes I don't know how you can live with yourself. Well, it's a lot easier than living with a black leg. Now, come on, Ross Baldwin, we're getting shot of us. Excuse me, is it all right to go in? Yeah, if you want to. Only I've never been in before, you see. I'm joined up at my local library, but I didn't know whether that counted. No, anyone can go in, love. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I wonder, could you help me? I'm looking for somebody who comes in here a lot. Love, there's thousands of people coming here every day. Oh, yes, I suppose so, but, uh, well, I wondered if you could tell me where I might go to start looking for him. He only comes in for a read. Yeah, well, most of the customers do love it. Oh. <laughs> Look, uh, is he a student? Oh, no. No, he's, um, he's a grown-up. Got a moustache and going a bit thin on the top, you know, just at the front. Yeah, but what sort of thing would he be reading? Oh, well, I don't rightly know. Just, uh, books. Mrs, if, if all the books in here were laid end to end, I mean, they stretch from that door to Pier Head in Liverpool, eh? Yeah. You wonder who has time to read them all, don't you? Best just look round, love. I mean, there's eight different libraries in here. There's another. Local history, Jewish library, music library, arts library, social sciences, commercial, technical. Oh. Well, 
If you was coming in just for a read out of the rain, where would you go? Start off with general readers, love. It's up there and straight through. Oh, tell very much. And no singing. Pardon? Oh, never mind. Find what you wanted? Well, I think so. I'm not sure anymore. I've got spots before the eyes. Spots, stripes, daisies, writhing vines, all thought. You know, I begin to see why the Pope got Michelangelo to decorate the Sistine Chapel. He got fagged out trying to choose the wallpaper. You ever seen the Sistine Chapel? No. I have. I think it'd have been better off using matte vinyl. It's overdone. So much for the glories of the Renaissance. Speaking of which, you've got the job as, uh, Art correspondent, so get yourself down to the co-op halls. An exhibition there we ought to cover, local arts, it's all in there. I've seen that sort of thing and they should definitely stick to Matt Viner. Just think of something nice to say about them, that's the business we're in. You know, I don't know what business we are in when good stories come kicking you in the face and you won't print them. If you mean the bride that never was when second honeymoon... Oh, come on. People love seeing the name in the paper. No matter what they say, they love it. We're not using it and that is that. If you didn't happen to know her, would you? That's neither here nor there. Of course you would. You know something? I don't think you're really cut out for this newspaper business. You haven't got the real foot-in-the-door instincts. Oh, you're quite right. It wouldn't last a week on a Sunday paper, not even a posh one. Which is probably why I'm not in the newspaper business. Then what's this supposed to be? This is an advertising sheet with enough reading in it to make it palatable. Is any newspaper any different, really? Look, I don't want to argue with you. We are not in that business. If we were, we'd have naked girls on page three. Look, I know I just fill in a bit of space in between the ads, but I have these delusions about being a great journalist, so don't take that away from me. I know. And I know that you're ambitious. And one of these days I know you'll move on from here, and when you do, I'll wish you all the luck in the world. But while you're here... All right, all right, we don't do anything about it. Fine, fine. You came here. I thought you must be. I missed you completely. Well, I wasn't sure whether I wanted you to see me, so... Oh, no. But I couldn't let you go. Because I owe you an apology. I do. No, you don't. I just wanted to say... What do you know about? Listen, is there anywhere in the neighbourhood we can go and have a cup of tea? Oh, yeah, in the library. Can you get a cup of tea in the library? Stairs, I'll show you. It's a proper little home for a moment, isn't it? Do you know? I never knew there was that many books in the whole world. I wanted to make sure you were all right. And I'm not the only one. Mr. Sugden was very concerned and all. Really? Mm. Well, I am all right. Well, we thought you might have done something daft. No. No. We was very relieved when we found out you took your bike. It was you that took it. Oh, all the bike, yes. Yeah. Well, I had such a struggle with my bags and all, so I left it chained. Yeah, that's what we thought. <laughs> you shouldn't have gone, you know. I'm just sorry. I wanted to say it. I'm sorry I let you down. You didn't. Well, I felt as if I'd shown you up. After all that sticking up for me, then I had to go make a complete fool of myself. Is that what you think you did? There's no two ways about it. 
when I walked out of that hall, I was shaking. I said, that's it, Henry. Don't you bother showing your face round here no more. So... Well, I think you've got that wrong. Well, I don't. If there's one place on God's earth where you can walk with your head held high, it's from one end of Coronation Street to the other. Cos you got up and give as good as you got. Better. I was drunk, that's all. I don't care. That wasn't the drink talking. Now, you know it, I know it, and they know it. That was the truth they heard, and it struck home. All the same, I couldn't have gone back. Listen, love. It's the one place where you'll never have to do it again. Now, think about that. Well, uh, have you let the room? If you want to come back, love, it's there waiting for you. All I want is for you to be sure in your own mind that if you did come back to that street, you could come back with your head up. Well, I've got fixed up at the moment. Temporary. But I don't know why you bother, Mrs. Holden. I don't. But thanks. You made your mind up yet? Because we're just closing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to decide. I'll take this one. Oh, it's a nice one, is that, isn't it? Forty pounds, please. Here you had a bit of luck. How do you mean? Well, somebody told me uh, you went a fabulous holiday. Who told you? Did you, Barley? Oh, well, no, she, she's got it wrong. I haven't really won anything. How's that? <laughs> well, it was just a bit of a mix-up, really. It was just something that I went in for, and, well, the, the prize was a second honeymoon. Well, I'm not a married person, so I can't take it. Well, you're not going to let that stop you, are you? Just crack on you are and collect it. What sort of um, competition was it? Oh, it was a bit silly. I had to describe a perfect honeymoon. <laughs> anyway, there's no point in talking about it because I'm not going. Well, you're mad. Where would you be going? Oh, Capri. It would have to be Capri. Mavis, if you don't want it splashed all over a recorder, I wouldn't be talking to her. Well, you wouldn't put anything in the paper, would you? If it went in the recorder that you had a perfect honeymoon and Capri going begging, you'd be inundated with offers of marriage. Oh, no, I don't want anything like that. I mean, I wouldn't have mentioned all it in right, the first place. All right, I'll give you my word. There'll be nothing at all in the recorder. Not a dicky bird. Bye. Bye. You want your head feeling. She said that she's a reporter. They break into an iron lung for a story. I didn't sleep a wink last night. They brought it all back to me, every ghastly second of that terrible day. Mm, I suppose it must have. Still, there is a funny side to it, isn't well, I there? fail to see it. Well, I mean, fancy winning a My Honeymoon competition, describing the perfect honeymoon, when you've never even set foot inside a church, let alone dived in a double bed. I mean, some folk might think that really hilarious. Or ironic. Ironic, that's more like it. Oh, I could describe it all right, couldn't I? It was all there in my head, but could I do it? No, I couldn't. I'm a wimp. Now, Mavis, don't go getting bitter. I wish I'd never gone in for the stupid competition. I must have felt very sure at that stage, mustn't I? Mm. Well, when I sent it into the magazine, I must have felt very sure that I was going to go on a honeymoon, or else I'd never have sent it. So, what happened to make me change my mind? And when did it actually start to happen? Now, Mavis, these are very old coals you're raking over. Let's just forget you ever won that competition. But the magazine will be getting in touch with me, won't they? I won the first prize, a second perfect honeymoon. Yes, but when you tell them you're still a spinster... Oh, Rita, I wish you wouldn't use that word. I'm not over fond of it. Sorry. When you tell them you're still a single person, they'll disqualify you. They'll have to. I suppose they will. Nay, hey, come on, Mavis. You can't want a flipping second honeymoon before you've even been on your first. Besides, who would you take with you? Cole fella. There's Victor. You're unscrupulous, you, aren't you? When it comes to getting some up for now, no morals, no principles, they'll disqualify you, and that'll be the end of it. I finished my papering last night, would you believe? Did you? And though I say it myself what did it, it was a classy job. Not a join or a wrinkle in sight. I think Herr Schickelgruber himself would have been proud of it. What's this? Uh, it's for you. Yes, I can see that.
It's your nephew. Yes. Have you got another job? Yes. Where are you going? Um, the Gazette. The Gazette? Mm. Did you apply for a job? No, they offered it me. Did they? Saw your work, recognised genius and poked you from me. Yes, yeah, something like that. Look, I had to take it, Ken. It's moving in the right direction, you know, it's a bigger paper. The Times, here I come. Fleet Street, definitely. I don't suppose there's any point in offering you more money? No. Well, congratulations, I wish you luck. Thank you. I'm sorry if I'm leaving you a bit high and dry. I'll manage, till I get somebody else. Yeah, you'll have a cue for me, job. <laughs> yeah. And, well, thanks for giving me my chance. You're a natural. I'm really sorry to be going. I'm sorry you're going. Dead you won't be. Perhaps not. Dead you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. Not a bit late, Hilda, very late. I said I was sorry. If one of us gets behind, it throws all of us behind for the rest of the morning. I don't want things getting slack, Hilda, that's all I'm saying. Would you give these new glasses a rinse, please, Betty, and put them on the shelf? Yeah. Well, flipping heck. How many times has she been late? She used to meet herself going home sometimes. Well, she used to get told off and all by Mrs. Walker, and that's changed. Oh, you're telling me. Any road, I was waiting in to see if Henry turned up. Because mm -hmm. I found him, you know, yesterday. You never. Yeah, I did. Oh. He was in the library. Oh, we had a good talk, all about all his troubles mm. and that. He said he didn't fancy coming back, but... Uh, I'm not sure if he meant it. Oh, I am pleased for you, the love. Thank very much. Oh. Now, I'd better get started before Mae West throws a fit and brosta corsets. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 dee, dee. Pom, pom, pom. Did I see Mrs Ogden coming here just now? Yes, she did. She's very busy and so am I. Well, you can pass a message on to her, can't you? Well, I can if it's a very short one. It's brief and to the point. You learn to be when you're under fire, you know. Is that a fact? Yes. Oh. Tell her I'm still on the job trying to track down a missing lodger. Now, I've come to the DHSS and the JC this morning. That's the Social Security and the Job Centre. Got that? ta -da. Hey, hey, hang on a minute, Percy. Shh! What are we supposed to be listening for? That. I thought I heard the Gazette van. And he's chucked him in the doorway again. I think he thinks he's in America, that driver. You look a picture from behind, Mrs. Fairfield. Did anybody ever tell you that? No, not a compliment I've had before. Now, if you've just come in for a warm and a peek at the noughties, on your way. I am about to have my lunch in the Rovers and require one newspaper to peruse over me tater ash. How you work with her, mate? She's very unfriendly. I think she's finding it a strain these days. Been on her feet all day. Do you want a gazette? I'll top the presses. Ah, uh, go on. <laughs> hey, Maeve, you're in here. On. Oh, front page. Look. Bride that never was wins dream honeymoon. Maybe Riley's wedding to Derek Wilton never took place, but yesterday she learnt that her description of a perfect honeymoon had won a first prize in a magazine competition. And the prize, another honeymoon. Is that right, Maeve? You have won another honeymoon describing one you never had. Must have a vivid imagination. You change. <laughs> da, hey. hey, who's going with you on this honeymoon, Maeve? Because I will come gladly. And then you'll have your suave, man-of-the-world experience, you know what I mean? Better than envying any novice, you know what I mean, kid? Ta-da, Jack, we're just <laughs> posing for his dinner. Think about it, mate. Bride that never was wins dream honeymoon. It's amazing what you read in papers, isn't it? <laughs> tell me it's not true. Just tell me it's not true. No, it's all there, love, like you said. Well, see for yourself. Oh! How did they get to know about it? Hey, search me. Oh, look, my name plastered all over the paper, everything about the wedding. Oh, everybody be laughing at me. Oh, come on, Mavis, calm down. Calm down, I'm a laughing stock. It's on your little local paper, have you? Anybody ever oh, takes it? local, exactly. It circulates round here where everybody knows about me. Oh, Rita, who could have done such a terrible thing? Oh, there's no name on that. Well, somebody must have written it. Are you sure you didn't talk to any reporters? Of course I'm sure. Maybe the only person I've spoken to who's got anything to do with the newspaper is Sally Waterman. She works for the recorder. Anyway, she promised me she wouldn't print anything. She promised faithfully. She could have passed it on, I suppose. Passed it on to Gazette. Do they do that sort of thing? Who knows what they do? Reporters. 
They're like spies, aren't they? That's just what I feel like. I just feel I've been spied on. I feel like a peep show. It's a poem, not a blemish. Like the breast of a robin. Hey, hang on. You've only stuck a bit of wallpaper up, and I held the steps. You're a first class paper hanger's mate, and if you ever want a reference. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, Sally slipped me a communication this morning, her resignation. A what? She's leaving, joining the Gazette. What, just like that, out of the blue? Just like that, apparently they offered her the job. Didn't you try and persuade her to stay? Yes, yes, I did. I even offered her more money. Did you know? Yes, purely for selfish reasons. I mean, she is my one and only staff. You're going to be very lonely in that office, aren't you? I'm going to be overworked. You know, I got Miss Waterman wrong. I thought she found working for you irresistible. So did I. Watch it. You come home for your dinner? No, actually, I came home to cast my eye over the building materials. Well, if you want to make a start, I can always make you a potted meat butter. No, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll wait till I've got a little more time. Let's go to the Rover, shall we? Hello, what's happened to my cocky little handyman, then? The units will be up tonight, no problem. I've finished my work, Miss Lynch. I trust you'll find everything satisfactory. Hey, now, what's with all this Miss Lynch business, Bethilda? I thought that's what you wanted, everything proper and formality. Look, I'm sorry if I barked at you this morning. Betty's told me you were waiting to see if Henry had turned up. Yes, I was. In fact, he might be waiting on my doorstep now. Well, I hope he is. Not. Yeah, me and all. Oh, the house hasn't been the same without him. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Riley said it's very embarrassing. <laughs> I'd forgotten I'd entered for the silly thing. I just did it on the spur of the moment. How was I to know the wedding wouldn't take place and the honeymoon would be cancelled? <laughs> Embarrassing. She'll never be able to show her face round here again. Oh, I know, of course, yeah. Like. <laughs> it serves her right. Should have took the plunge like we did and took the consequences like we did. Oh, thank you, my love. Hey, hold on a minute, Vera. He never turned up, neither did he, that day. It will. <laughs> hey, well, maybe should have found him. It's an insult to every other woman, that, letting him get away with that. So he did with your Jack, dragged him to the church with a scruff of the neck. <laughs> you know what I were hoping he wouldn't turn up? When I saw him at the altar, I, I, do you know I nearly died? I tried to make a dash for it, but my dad's ran with that about elbow right down my hand. Oh. Ah, he's trying to get it off his hand. <laughs> yes, folks, what's your pleasure? Uh, a lager and a glass of bitter, please. Uh -huh. First class choice, if I might say so. The bitter in this pub is in the peak of condition, and I should know because I look after it. Have you always worn specs, Mrs. Barlow? Since I was about nine, yeah. I've never seen anybody who suits specs as well as you do. You hardly notice you've got them on. <laughs> You've got a fan there. I never know with him whether he means what he says or it's just a line. Oh, he must mean it. You're okay. <laughs> oh, you're only saying that because you think you might need me muscles tonight. Yeah. Every <laughs> tradesman needs his labourer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, can I get you a drink? You can help me. I'll try. Have you seen the Gazette this morning? No. No, I haven't. There's one here, Ken. Come, Ken, have a look at your gazette, Jack. Ah, of course you can. Hey, you missed a good scoop for the reporter there, Ken. Hey, it's better than all you get in Sunday papers. <laughs> Front page. Oh, I don't believe it. How did they get on to it? Perhaps Ken knows. Uh, I haven't a clue. Maybe you think Sally Waterman might have told them. And if she has, it's unforgivable. Don't you think? Okay. If she has, yes, I do think it's unforgivable. Oh, come on in and sit yourself down. Oh, have you had any dinner? Oh, I had, I had a snack in that new place in Precinct, the Krusty Cob. Oh, yeah, that vegetable place. What did you have? Plate of carrots and nuts? Oh, they do a nice leek soup. Oh, fancy. Oh, it is nice to see you sitting in that chair again. <laughs> I knew you'd come back, you know. Well, it's all in the past now, isn't it, all that trouble at the factory? Oh, folk have got other things to think about. They've all got their own troubles, you know, especially round here. I mean, take Mrs Butterworth lives in the next street. Husband's had a seizure, daughter's gone off with a foreigner, and yesterday she left a chip pan on the set fire to her kitchen. Mrs Ogden. <laughs> and like I told you yesterday, You've already made them feel small, you know, all telling them off at that dance. Oh, some of them feel very small indeed. Mrs Ogden. Yes, Henry. I don't know how to say this. Say what? But I'm sorry, but I... It's only me, Mrs Ogden. 
I'm afraid I've got nothing to report again. I, uh... What are you doing here? I've been out looking for you. I've got subject skin looking for you. Yes, I'm sorry. I tracked him down yesterday, Mr. Subton. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I've not seen you to tell you. Didn't Mrs. Turpin tell you I was going out searching again? Well, yeah, but you'd already gone by then, hadn't you? I hope you realise the trouble you've put people through this last few days. I've combed this town for you, combed it. And if I get my death a cold, I know to come to for compensation. Good day to you. And if you go missing again, leave a forwarding address. He's upset, isn't he? Yeah. Not to mention wet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now then, where were we? I, I was going to say, I'm not stopping. I've thought about it very carefully. And I really do think it would be better if I made a fresh start somewhere else, far, far away from here, away from Weatherfield. Oh. Well, it's, it's up to you, of course, Henry. I am sorry. I was very happy here. I was happy to have you here. Hi. You're back early. Thought you'd be up to your neck in pieces of wood and wall plugs. Something wrong? Seen your paper today. My paper? It didn't come out till Friday. The Gazette. That's your paper now, isn't it? It's got your story in it. What story is that? The story that you gave them, the Mavis Riley honeymoon that never was story. <laughs> what gives you the idea it was me that gave it to them? Don't insult my intelligence, Sally. Of course it was you. You interviewed her. I did not interview her. You spoke with her at length and you promised you wouldn't write anything. In the recorder. I said I wouldn't print a story in the recorder. Oh, very subtle. And that got your conscience off the hook, did it? You promised Mavis to write nothing in the recorder, but anywhere else not covered by your guarantee. You must have a conscience the size of a pea. It was a good story. Yes, it did you a lot of good with the Gazette, didn't it? Which came first, the story or the job? The story, if you must know. But I didn't give it to them for that reason, to get the job. I just didn't want to see it wasted like you were going to do. I wasn't wasting it. I didn't want to hurt Mavis, humiliate her. You'd throw away nearly every story you got if you worked on that principle. Most good stories upset somebody. Ask any journalist. Then they can keep them. I don't like going around upsetting people. Well, not innocents abroad like Mavis. Well, you're not really a journalist, are you? And the recorder's just a giveaway. One big advertisement, really. And you are a journalist, I suppose. I'm going to be. And damn principles and honesty and facts. I'll get my facts right. Don't you worry. Nobody's saying there's anything wrong with the facts in that story, are they? No. Well, then. I think you got that story out of Mavis by telling her a deliberate lie. It's in the Gazette, but you work for me, so I'm implicated too. Now, if you want to tie up one or two loose ends and leave today, I wouldn't object. That's what you want? I do. Well, I'm quite prepared to work my notice out. I think the sooner you join the Gazette, the better. You just think I'm hard and ruthless, don't you? Well, I can be ruthless about some things. I could have been ruthless about you. Just think what a narrow escape you've got. Hello, Elder Love. What are you doing in here at this time? Have you seen anything of Henry? Oh, yeah, he turned up and he's gone again, for good. Can you give us a pot and lemon, please, see if that'll cheer me up? I'll get it, and it's on the oven. Oh, thank you. What happened, though? Well, he just thought he ought to make a fresh start somewhere else, you know, where nobody knows him. Perhaps he's got a point. You know, if that lot over there had only minded their own business, because I think he had more guts doing what he did, going into work, than all them what come down, didn't he? Oh, yeah, look, get that then. Thank you very much. Cheers. Very nice. And someone tells to book you up and all. Just read that. There's no better when you're feeling down yourself than to hear about other folks' disasters. No, I don't know, But I close your mouth, love. I can see your feet. <laughs> We've talked about nothing else in the cafe all day. I know, I've had them in here, pretending they want some, then looking disappointed when they don't see Mavis and slinging their oak. You could make a bomb, couldn't you? A poster and window. Don't just read about today's news, step right inside and see it in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan! <laughs> Where is she, Mavis? Taken to her bed, I think. Ah, oh, it'll soon blow over. I keep telling her that. Hey, I wonder if this magazine would be interested in my honeymoon story. 
I don't think they're interested in miserable failures. Are they, Rita? I doubt it. A failure? You weren't on the Isle of Man in a days or a week. You couldn't believe your look. He honestly believes that, you know. They have to love. It's the only thing that makes them feel superior. It's based on very flimsy foundations. I know. Come on, Tiger. Let's see if I can find you some raw meat. Tell Mavis not to worry. Right. Same here. OK. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Yes, look. You're not Mavis Riley, are you? No, you're not. Who are you? The Shin, Mavis. Who are you? Jim Lomax. I'm a freelance reporter. I work for the Nationals, the Daily Papers. I wanted a word with Miss Riley. I'm sure you know what about. Sorry, she's not in. Where is she? Gone to her mother's. Oh, where's that? Not at liberty to tell you. Are you sure she's not in? I said so, didn't I? Look, I only want a few minutes with her to get a few points straight about the story in the Gazette. She wouldn't talk to you about that if she was here. Now, if you don't mind, I've got work to do. When is she coming back from her, uh, mother's? No idea. I can wait. No point. Could be next month. Are you her boss? No, I'm just me. Good afternoon. Much obliged. Cheerio. Hello. Hi. You're early. Yeah, I've had enough. What happened with Sally? I fired her. Good as. Paid her up and she's gone. Really? Well, what else could I do? She used us. Us? Yeah, first you told us the story about Mavis, and then she used the recorder to get it for the Gazette. No flies on Sally. You almost say that as if you envy her. She knows what she wants, and she means to get it. Good luck to her. Well, whatever means she uses. I can't see her murdering anybody, can you? That's the criteria, is it? As long as you don't murder anybody, grab the cherry. You only live once, Ken. I think the trick is not to have too many regrets. Not success at any price, though. Or happiness. Anyway, I've got you a nice fillet steak for your tea. Build your strength up for your night job. <laughs> yeah, I can't be everything, I suppose. A star journalist like Sally and a do-it-yourself expert. There's no such beast. Probably not. Hello. I was just coming up to see if you were all right. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I've been giving myself a good talking to, and well, I can't cower in my flat again. Did all my cowering after my non-wedding. Still, a couple of days out of circulation. No, I've decided, Rita. I'm going to brazen it out. Good for you. You coming round tonight? I'll see. Right, see you later. Mm. Hey, and remember, don't go talking to any more reporters. We don't want you on the six o'clock news as well, do we? How old? There are. I'm sorry, we're just closing. That's Riley, isn't it? Yes. Pleased to meet you, Jim Lomax. Oh, it's parky outside tonight, isn't it? Sorry, I don't think I know you. I didn't know the lady mentioned I'd be calling back. Oh, I always like to check my facts, you see. It's an obsession with me. This, uh, this story in the Gazette. There are one or two things that just don't ring true. Are you the reporter that came before? That's me. For instance. They must have got your age wrong. You can't be 47. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not saying anything. How old are you? 40? 35? Will you please go? You can trust me, you know, Mavis. I don't have to trust you. I live here in Weatherfield. If I write a lot of rubbish, you can find me, can't you? Complain about me to the press council, if you like. Will you please go? But the others will be coming. They'll be strangers. What others? Reporters from Manchester. Probably London as well. It's a good story. How many of them? Oh, half a dozen? A dozen? Well, I won't talk to them either. Oh, they can be very persistent. Camp on your doorstep for days. Beat a path to your bathroom if they have to. <laughs> I can help you avoid all that. I can, Mavis. How? Talk to me and I'll talk to them. I'm a freelance, you see. I'll tell them your story just as you tell it to me. No embellishments, no fiction. One interview and it'll be all over. Oh, I'm only thinking of what's best for you, Mavis. Honestly, it'll save you a lot of hassle. I'm not sure. Trust me. Oh, all right. Yeah, you'll not regret it. Now, uh, you live round here, don't you? Yes, uh, in the flat upstairs. Oh, well, uh, 
Do you think we could, uh... Oh, okay. I'll just lock up first. And the street is back this evening at 6.30 and Johnny Briggs made his debut as Mike Baldwin back in October 1976. But he actually played the part of a van driver before that in 1972. Well, coming up next on Plus, it's Emmerdale.